It's July 27th, 2014, and this week, will the guys get a second chance at comprehending the unlife of a DC character? Just how much use is Catwoman getting out of the word of the day calendar she got from Coroner Bill? It's all coming up next. It's episode 83 of DCR starting now. We rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny and usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's the Stress Citizens Radio. Everybody and welcome back to another episode of the only podcast that promises not to give you leprosy. That's right, we have the leprosy free guarantee. And I, of course, remain your host, Sean Lamont, and I am joined by folks who have are the epitome of non-lepers. You guys are not lepers, correct? You have all your yep. limbs. I didn't count when you came in. Uh, of course, the punmeister general himself, Mr. Brian Glein. Hello, sir. Hey there, Sean. How's it going? Are, we, st- are we still not going to attack people with killer bees? Uh, well, yeah. It's it's promises. Because I've, I've got a jar that I can use at any time. Nope, nope. Oh. I'm actually going to add a tab onto the website of all the things that we promise we will not do. Okay. <laughs> but we have a special guest this week. Our correspondent, who's going to help us cover everything over at San Diego Comic-Con, our resident Californian, it's Hollywood Scott. Hello, Hollywood Scott. Hey, hey. Thanks for having me back, guys. Hey, how's it going? In the brand new studio. So I said you were going to help us cover the San Diego Comic-Con because you live there. Well. (laughs) And then you flew back to Ohio (laughs) the week of San Diego (laughs) Comic-Con. Well... You know, actually, this weekend's the best weekend to be in L.A. because everybody makes that two-hour trip down to San Diego, like all the industry types and, you know, comic book people. So you can just strut around town so and do whatever you want. So instead of the abysmal traffic situation, you now have a somewhat reasonable traffic situation. Oh, so. Man. So you so, flew out, yeah. you skipped out on the good traffic, I didn't, the convention. When I booked this trip, I didn't even look at or think about when it was going on. You were the worst I correspondent totally on the face it. of the planet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I can hop on Twitter. <laughs> just hashtag some SDCC and we'll just keep uh, going over to you. We'll be like Hollywood Scott with the update <laughs> yeah. of San Diego Comic Con. Oh, yeah. Better get that out. What's your Wi-Fi password? <laughs> oh, let me give that out to you here, real quick. <laughs> I mean, what's the studio's Wi-Fi password? <laughs> uh, so, guess what we are going to do? I ask you guys to guess every week, but go ahead, give me a quick guess. Are we going to spoil everything that happened this week in the New 52? We are. We're going to go over all the comics that came out from DC and their New 52 line. Talk about the storylines, plot beats, etc., etc. You guys know the drill. But if you do not want your book spoiled, do not listen ahead. Now we if may you're s- reading Scooby-Doo Team Up, don't worry. We're not saying a thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we may sound a little off today. It's late, late at night. The baby is asleep. Uh, the fiance is asleep. <laughs> the 10 year old is asleep. Everyone's asleep. So we're kind of being sneaky in our recording. So bear with us a little bit if we get a little quiet on occasion. Bears. Uh, Are people safe from bears when they're listening to our podcast? Bears? Yeah. What about? Oh, really because I keep telling people to, to bear. The bears? Well, no, no, that, okay. that'll be next week's promise. We <sighs> okay. promise no bears. <laughs> Uh, we are going to skip out on questions as well. No questions this week because we have one or two books again. Yeah. Do you know how many books we have, Brian? Too many. Okay. Scott, do you have a guess on how many books come out each week from DC uh, Comics? I don't know, like 74, 75? No, no close. Okay. You're a little off. All right. Uh, 15 is ah, what we're looking down the okay. barrel of this All week. Right. So next week would have been eight, which would have been perfect for mm. you. But you know the drill. Any questions you have, feel free to chime in. Keep the puns to a minimum. That's, That's my job. No, no, we're keeping all <laughs> puns to a minimum. <laughs> That's a new thing we're trying here. So oh, man. Uh, let us not dilly-dally anymore and just dive right into this week's books. All right, so you're starting us off, Sean? I am Superman number 33. It's the second issue from Jeff Johns and John Romita Jr. Um, just to fill you in, Scott... Last issue, we basically have a, what's the best way to put it, Brian? A, a copycat of Superman, essentially. Nick Superman's meeting. Yes. Superman hmm. is meeting his doppelpopolis. What fresh and original territory there. I've never well, heard of that in. 
except in this case it is a a guy from earth whose parents were scientists they accidentally opened a gate to the second dimension that had antimatter and it was going to eat through the world yeah like you do when yeah. you're doing science exactly yeah. i mean it happened all the science time in my physics all about coulda, not when coulda. you're pushing the limits you know you never know what's going to happen so what they did was they shot their kid off to the fourth dimension before their planet was destroyed in this case earth mm. and uh then it turns out earth didn't get destroyed so this guy has come back as a full-grown adult with superpowers by the name of ulysses ulysses he doesn't, he doesn't remember the tv show either really what tv show ulysses. Lois and clark no, no. ulysses 31 no. <laughs> it's a shame the, although there were like two or three people it seemed like most of the british folks had heard of it huh well, you said it was French, didn't you? Was it before my time? Yeah, it was... Uh, it's like a weird French-Japanese anime about space Jesus murdering yeah, the other Yeah, space gods. Jesus killing every other deity that's out there. <laughs> this was a children's show also. In the early 80s. Way ahead of its time. It was born in the mid-80s. So there you go. <laughs> hey, uh, just uh, let's keep the years to a minimum here. <laughs> <laughs> what year? Oh, yeah. No, sorry. Uh, so, where we are at right now, uh, he had befriended Clark Kent, Superman... And Superman is trying to piece together what exactly is going on, who this guy is, everything that's happening. But we're going to take a quick sidestep in this issue because we're going to visit the Daily Planet. That bustling newspaper, as all newspaper offices are these days, Mm -hmm. uh, he is basically screaming at everyone that works there. I guess this is old school Perry White, yeah. where he would just yell at everyone that works there. It's like yeah. this big board meeting of all the reporters, and he's just yelling at them on, who is this guy? How come everyone knows who he is? Uh, Jimmy, why can't you take any pictures that aren't out of focus? What the hell, man? <laughs> I mean, it's just all of them yelling at him, and that's when Clark Kent pokes his head in and goes, hey, uh, Perry, I know I don't work here anymore, but can I ask you a quick question about a story you wrote back when you were still a cub reporter? He's like, oh, yeah, of course. Everyone should be as cool as Clark Kent. Uh, by the way, Clark, do you want to come back and work for us? Brian, in the, the saddest part of this issue, yeah. it seems we're getting the ClarkCatropolis.com whitewashed here. Yeah, yeah. Cat Grant already went, has gone back to the day. Not planet. yet. He said she was close to signing mm, back yeah. on. Uh, it, at some point, Clark Kent and one of the other reporters went, uh, Jerry Maguire, the, 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 who's the, coming the, with me. Oh, no. <laughs> the ditzy fashion reporter. He was yes. the only one who came with him. And oh, started wow. up a blog that was failing miserably. That's and at least sort of modern. It is. A blog. I mean, it, was, it was a nice direction. It was honestly yeah. our favorite part. It was part. our favorite part of the yeah. last run of Superman. Because it was just so odd, honestly. It was yeah. the, the ditzy fashion reporter and him trying to do these hard-hitting social pieces and she's just like, no, we don't need that. So they literally had a website that was with the uh, the old line down the middle of the room Where type all the thing. Right. stuff was on one side yeah. and, all, and all of her, you know, MS Paint drawings over celebrities yeah. were on the other side. Speaking of modernity, I have a quick question. Jimmy Olsen's getting criticized for photos being out of focus? Yes. This is like 2014. Like You could buy a camera with really good autofocus. But don't forget he's, he's trying to take like, pictures of people flying at the speed of light practically as okay. well. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe there's not a shutter speed quick enough for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he really doesn't have. The, well, I guess he has the money for it, but yeah. Mm. But he's he's also a millionaire. But okay, that's a whole side that's issue. A whole that's thing that's going to be whitewashed wiped, as well. Wiped under the rug as well. <laughs> so it turns out that Perry White, back in the day when he was a reporter, actually wrote the story on that Ulysses uh, research lab and it being destroyed. Uh, actually, right before it was destroyed. So Clark Kent's asking me all these questions. And, of course, Perry White, being a reporter, newspaper guy, is like, you're on to something. You're following up on a story. Tell you what, I will give you all that intel. I'm the only person that knows it. I assure you of that. I will give it all to you if we get first dibs at the story and you come back to work for us. And he agrees to it. And uh, basically, Perry White fills him in on all of the details. It, yeah, it never actually blew up. The lab's still out there. It's out at this location. Here's the place. And Superman goes, okay, well, I I guess I'll go check that out. Well, Clark Kent in this case. Uh, As they're talking, though, Ulysses just comes strolling into the offices looking for Superman. And he looks right at Clark Kent. And he's like, there you are, buddy. I was looking for you. And Clark (laughs) Kent, of course, is trying to keep his secret identity and is going, oh, yes, yes, I have an interview with him. Ha, ha, ha. And let's go, Ulysses. Let's go do that interview thing at the coffee shop. Perry White, of course, going, best reporter ever. He's already got the interview lined up. And uh, Lois Lane oh, and Jimmy geez. Olsen are going to team up to figure out how he gets his leads all the time. Hmm. So we're kind of putting things back to the old status quo, like the old uh, 
the old Reeves movies or Reeve movies. I'm I mean, sorry. Does he ever go to like clean his glasses and everyone just goes like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that never oh, happens. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Still my favorite Saturday Night Live sketch is the, the poorly disguised <laughs> oh, Superman. Oh, yes. <laughs> the rock. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so they end up going back to Clark Kent's apartment. Clark Kent fills him in and goes, hey, man, you can't do that to me. I have this thing called a secret identity. And Ulysses, of course, is the fish out of water going, what do you mean secret identity? Why would you hide who you are? That's weird. You're a strange fellow, aren't you? And uh, <laughs> Superman tells him, just wait here. I'm going to follow up some on some leads. And he goes off to check out the lab and finds a whole bunch of things going on there uh, that might contradict what we thought at first, Brian. Now, while all that's going on, a bunch of robotic green army men, i.e. the toys, attack Metropolis, and Ulysses decides he's going to go out there and help save all his fellow humans and beats them up and starts trashing the city. Superman hears about it, flies back from the lab, helps him out because Ulysses is kind of trashing the city in the process and goes, dude, I told you to stay in the apartment. Come on. We have somewhere to go because I found out some interesting details here and takes him off where we find out that Ulysses' parents actually saved the planet. They never died. There was never an explosion in the lab. They stopped it right after they shot their kid off to the fourth dimension, and he introduces Ulysses to his parents and feels sad that his parents, in fact, are dead. Sad face, Superman. Yeah. Sad face. Ow. Just <laughs> smack myself in the face with a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it was, it was, there's also some shadowy figure out there that's like, yes, yeah, Superman, you must be alone for now. <laughs> and we don't know who that is yet. So still fun. It seems like Ramita's starting to find his, uh, style his groove, that he wants yeah. to do. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of folks were saying that they preferred this issue over the last one, but I didn't really notice that much of a difference. Less I just gorilla punching. Well, obviously less gorilla. Yeah. There was no gorillas, period. Uh, but there was at least a, a, a lot more emotive f- uh, faces on the mm-hmm. people during the yeah, scenes. Definitely. And that seemed to be the main concern of folks last issue. Uh, but Scott, that, that kind of made sense, right? Yeah. We were able to follow and up. And I have it here in front of me to look at now. Oh, actually. yeah, that's right. I forgot. On the high definition touch screen pew, display. Pew, pew. Yeah. The high the, the definition iron, touch screen iron, paper. Iron like in the new studio. Yeah. <laughs> AKA paper. No. <laughs> I'm trying to back. sell your new studio. <laughs> I appreciate it, but, yeah. you know. You, you, these are comic books. You are allowed to be like, yeah. I have the book. <laughs> <laughs> this day and age, though. Fair enough. Uh, Brian, what do you got coming up, though? I've got The Flash 33. All right. So The Flash, he's trying to wrap up solving the mashup killer case. That's his five, name, it seems. Five, five issues in, they have come up with the name The Mashup Killer. Very modern, where there's a guy who's using old villain weapons to kill people. Um, he figures out that all the people that he's stealing the weapons from used to run in the same, or actually that all the people that are being killed used to run in the same crew. So the last guy who's loose that hasn't been killed yet must be the mashup killer. Oh, but of course. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Detective Seaborn, uh, Flash, he's a CSI investigator in, in his, uh, civilian identity. See, a lot of this stuff's pretty modern. Yeah. yeah. But he was, he was CSI before it was cool. Yeah. Before, before the sunglasses before and the, he- yeah! <laughs> so um dete- his buddy detective seaborn who arrested all these guys back in the day points him towards the last guy whose name is jones and then of course um because she has to every issue iris uh west shows him and says hey barry drop everything you're doing you've got to take care of my <laughs> my nephew who's in at, in danger and at risk and he's gonna f- do some shoplifting why don't you stop doing your job and go help my nephew <laughs> There's been this odd side story in The Flash where yeah. uh, The Flash actually arrested this guy's dad. It's Iris West, his ex-wife in the old continuity, but now they're just friends in the new continuity. Mm. And uh, he had the dad arrested, and now she's responsible for her nephew. And, of course, he's running roughshod all over, so she's trying to get him to help out in his regular identity. Uh. But it's just been very... Awkward. Yeah, I guess awkward's a good word kind of, for kind it. Of, kind of shoehorned in there almost. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's, it, it seems like it's the, it's like the weirdest thing because it seems like she's trying to use it as an in to break him up with his girlfriend so she can date him. I'm not quite sure how a, uh, troubled teenage youth is the best, uh, I don't know, icebreaker. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I don't think it's the best at all, honestly. Yeah. 
So um, meanwhile, while all this stuff with the mashup killer is going on, we have also been getting shots of the Flash from the future, who's been traveling back in time, uh, brutally murdering his rogues gallery so they don't cause any more trouble. Or being there for their actual death. Or being there for their actual death, yes. Like to to be like, hey man, we had a lot of fun together. Sad to see you die of cancer. It's like, man... Real happy book we got. Here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right now, uh, he, right now he comes across a trickster who's trying to rob a bank with coin robots. Of course. Um, yeah, so the future Flash, he threatens to kill the trickster, but when he says that he wants to live, he tells him that, uh, what would have happened if he went through with this heist was he would have accidentally killed a kid and he would have killed himself. So kind of, you know, yeah, okay, so. guilt. he would have felt bad that the kid died with his silly little heist and killed himself. Yeah. So he's so he sets him on the straight and narrow so he will stop doing crimes once and for all. And whenever you think about doing crime, you just look at this newspaper where you killed yourself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah according, <laughs> according to the this this uh, according to this uh, set of future rules, it does not Marty McFly disappear no. when they change the past. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So but um, Biff's is still a thriving casino. It oh, is. Sure. It's, yeah. it's rocking. It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Cleveland's turning into. All right. So um, back in modern times, Barry goes to find this Jones guy, who's obviously the mashup killer, to see him overdosing on snake bite or hey, crystal death. Hey, see, yeah. it's coming around. Yes, this is this is actually shown up in other books. The uh, horrible other street book. drug of snake bite. Other <laughs> snake book. Snake bite. Snake bite. Wow. Or crystal death. <laughs> This Jones guy, he's he's already overdosing, frothing at the mouth. He turns into a gigantic attack on Titan muscle monster thing. Yeah, the strange thing about snake bite slash crystal death is either you get high, you go into a coma, or you turn into a giant rage monster. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why all the kids want to do it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's really two out of three, not too bad. You <laughs> only have like a 33% chance of going into that yeah. coma. The other two, pretty badass, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so if we see a YouTube video next week where Miley Cyrus is some weird rage death monster, we know that Snake Bite is. <laughs> if she's it trying to kick down world. walls all the time, yeah, she yeah, yeah. she was on that uh, wrecking, wrecking ball, ball all the time. She was. Yeah, she would be the best Titan there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he fights the muscle monster. Uh, his he has, goes into heart failure because his heart got in, enlarged as well, and he dies. So he's like, oh, well, that was pretty easy. I like to pretend that his heart didn't grow into a giant rage monster, and it was just really tiny in there, and that's why he fell over. <laughs> yeah. He then realizes, oh, crap. Wally West posted on Facebook that he was going to go shoplift right now. I've got to go stop him from shoplifting. <laughs> Is that really? <laughs> that's really what happens. There's a panel where he's like on Facebook. No, he, tabs no, he his, his not girlfriend, his uh, Wally's aunt says, I was hacking his Facebook account, you know, oh, as you do. In the cloud. Through, fly, the cloud. <laughs> fl flying through wireframes in the cloud. <laughs> the net. <laughs> Sorry, Sandra Bullock. <laughs> <laughs> Giant avatars in the net. <laughs> I've um, been deleted. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to go stop Wally from shoplifting. There's I'm been sorry, a... I hate that movie, Scott. <laughs> oh, it's it's really outdated. It's kind of funny now. <laughs> um, I hate it too. <laughs> <laughs> so he's he's been lo also throughout the storyline. He's been losing his time. So when he uses his super speed, he'll be wind up going getting to places later than he expects to. So he goes there and he sees Wally. He's getting arrested for being just the lookout because he didn't actually do the shoplifting, but he was the lookout. And so he's getting arrested. It's his second strike. Are we going to find out that the Flash is a functioning alcoholic? And that's why he keeps losing time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he ducks off to a bar real quick whenever he uses his super speed, drinks down like a whole bunch of booze, and then he just loses three minutes. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, Captain Cold. So... Also, at almost the same exact time, Wally, Wally uh, not Wally, Barry realizes the mashup thing was way too easy and uh, crime, does some crime scene investigating. And, oh my gosh, Detective Seaborn is actually mashup. Da, 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 da. He's going to do something about it? Or so is he just like, huh, yeah. he's well, gonna I got him. bamboozled. <laughs> yes. Can I get some clarification on the mashup killer? Yes. I don't mean to go on a tangent. Not a problem. I, just, I yeah, think of like a kid with his laptop. Like yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, together. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a. <laughs> no, it's a. Uh, he's <laughs> because he's got access to a uh, the um, evidence locker. He's been taking like the weapons of various supervillains, and he's been using a different one each time. 
and sometimes he has even been using two at the same time. Yeah. So like it's been an, it's it's partially been an excuse to like make up silly supervillain names. Like there's a guy named Mogul, and you've spent half the issue thinking that he's like you know this big crime guy, and it turns out he's a skiing themed supervillain. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. There's a guy named Black Mold. We were a big fan of the Black Mold costume. Squishes everywhere he walks. Mm, yeah. so. mm. <laughs> but so it, he's, he's mixing up. He's mixing up the super other, villains. Well, they just had a whole big storyline where things, the yeah. villains overthrew the planet and just basically uh, crime syndicate and all the villains overran the city. So they assumed while that was happening, people had broken into the, the evidence locker and stolen mm. all the weapons. But this detective, it turns out, actually just took everything for himself and has been using it. I can see that. That's pretty clever. Yeah. yeah. And it would definitely keep people on their toes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It, it wasn't be surprised if there's some uh, movie in the future that completely rips that idea off. <laughs> or an episode of CSI. Right? I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what'd you think of the art in this one? Um, I'm still not. I'm, I'm still so sad. About the, the Manipal Bucciolato stuff yeah, gone. I, I love the Manipal Bucciolato, and I, yeah, I, I just the, don't uh, think anyone that was going to follow that was going to have a. Yeah, and but even like some of the fill-in guys were doing something very dynamic. This is so. This is so very house style. Yeah, it is pretty house style. I'm not gonna. I mean, there's Doctor there's, House, not Doctor House. Yeah, right? <laughs> there, there, there is fun stuff. Like I liked a uh, Barry and uh, oh crud, what's his girlfriend's name? Patty, Patty, yeah, Patty. Spivet. They just see they're already making me forget. <laughs> You've about been her. reading this book for like thirty issues I now. Know, I know, <laughs> it's late, man. I know. But yeah, they, they know. have they have like they've got like the dorkiest like couples coffee mugs known to mankind. Yeah, there's still a lot of there's a lot of fun stuff being thrown in the background. That's the one thing I do like. They are actually putting backgrounds in. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of just kind of half backgrounds and stuff like that. Or yeah, it does it does feel like an actual city that he's running around. Yeah, which. Works for me. Mm-hmm. I think if Central City gets to the same level as Gotham as far as character-wise, because it is bright, it's vibrant. Yeah, it is one of the more well-defined cities in the DC universe. So, so again, if it was any, if he, if he was doing anything other than following up my favorite, one of my favorite artists, I would probably have no issues with it whatsoever. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's a, that's a fair statement to make. Uh, I'm going to go back in time though. Okay. Cause I'm going to Secret Origins number four, 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 four. four. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're, it's a book that basically tells all the origin stories, so they don't have to do them in the other books, even though they've done them in the other books. Mm. So some of it's basically a centralized... If you want to know origin stories for all these characters or have a sampler pack of just random characters, that's kind of what this is. So we don't spend too much time on it. So uh, we get the 15th retelling of Harley Quinn's origin. We do get the 15th one, although okay. this one does tell a different part of it. Okay. We at least have half of the her origin story has a completely new part of this whole... Well, at least new to me. I don't know if it's new at all, but... Gotcha. Uh, when she was a childhood kid, her first crush that she had was this boy that basically they had a conversation at a party where he was like, hey, if you could kill anyone here, who would it be? And they were like, ha, 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 doing this whole thing. And she pointed out this, the obviously, the cheerleader that was picking on her all the time. And this kid ended up being a killer and did exactly what she told him to do and threw the girl out in front of a truck and he went to jail and she was like, huh, wow, we crazy people are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why she became a psychologist and then ended up going to Arkham, fell in love with the Joker there while trying to quote unquote cure him. He ended up getting to her and then uh, sprung him out. She, uh, Joker tossed her into the chemicals. So she looks all pale now too. And uh, eventually Joker... I guess he once he got what he wanted, kicked her to the curb, and she's been running solo ever since. Harley Quinn. Uh, other one was Green Arrow, who was a spiteful kid being rich. Of course, Oliver Queen. His dad was a bi- 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 billionaire, and he basically just tried not to do any of his responsibilities until he was cast off to guard an oil rig in the middle of the ocean so he would stop <laughs> screwing up his family's stuff. Wow. And uh, instead of actually doing his job, he just flew all of his friends out onto the oil rig and they had a big party there. <laughs> and that's when uh, people attacked the oil rig to get all their money and all the rich people that were there to hold them hostage. Uh, Oliver Queen tries to save them with his awesome archery skills that he learned as a kid. And he was drunk as hell and ends up accidentally hitting the dead man's switch that detonates the entire oil rig, killing all of his friends. <laughs> and he ends up getting washed up on an island. I wonder how long he was on that island. I don't know. Five years, you think? Three Maybe. years? <laughs> Maybe. 
If only there was like a quick intro or something that could just I fill know. us in on his backstory. How does he feel about his friends and how does he honor them? I don't know. Okay. I just don't know. Have you watched that show at all, Scott? The show Arrow? Yeah. No, I have not. Really? The first, good the, the first season is on Netflix. It's And I think my roommate has the like box set DVDs. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty it's, fun. It's it fun starts off a little slow. I'm Start, not gonna lie, yeah. right. but it's 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 can't be in like a Doctor Who kind of way. Okay. It's 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 fun serialized television, right? And then the Flash has his own show coming up. I heard. season two. Yeah. I've heard about that. Yeah, and he's it's been very promising so far on yeah. the uh, his little uh, preview appearances on 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 Arrow. Okay. <laughs> oh, they're like, like uh, tying him in like that. So yeah, it's they, yeah, like they, a yeah, spin-off? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he actually smart. had his origin in the uh, mid-season finale of ah, okay. of Arrow. So they're going to have characters move back and forth across it and basically they're friends and all that and they can build their own little TV universe over there. And they're yeah, still they're smart. still shopping a Wonder Woman show as well. Huh. So they're they're looking to actually make a DC TV type situation over there it looks like. Yeah, I heard that they're trying to keep the mo- they're going to keep the movies and the TV separate and that gave basically CW full rights to go their own path and do their own. Obviously they can't get the big ones, they can't get Superman, they can't get Batman. Yeah. It's just the way it is, but there's still plenty of other characters yeah, out there they can do, Fair especially game. with the announcements of characters that are going to be showing up this season. I accidentally read an announcement thing and I was like, ah, <laughs> but yes. our most favorite character is showing up on Flash. So I don't really mm-hmm. care about exactly. anything else. Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the last story and the most important story in this particular secret origin is the origin of Robin. Damien Robin. Oh. And what it is, is a pre- Batman and Robin, pre Morrison drink, Batman and Robin, uh, Nightwing and Damien story. So it's before they became Batman and Robin together when he was still just Nightwing right after Bruce died. And it's all told basically from Damien's point of view. Uh, do you remember the Damien stuff? I think we went over it last time when you were on the actual biological son of Batman. Let's say yes. Yeah. (laughs) There you go. It's his actual biological son that Talia Mm -hmm. al Ghul and him got it on. And she actually had a kid, so before uh, she backstabbed him or whatever. Yeah, I'm and going they off the movie. Other. I'm assuming it's the same as the movies. Similar, okay. similar. Yeah. I mean, th- there was a scorpion involved, so that's ah. that's integral to the birthing process, as we discussed Batman last week. Was year. more shirtless, yes, and very hairy chest. So, yeah, but kept the cowl on the entire time. <laughs> Kinky, <laughs> uh, but it's basically just uh, it's right after. Batman, quote unquote, died when he got sent back in time, uh, facing down against Darkseid. And it's Damien running around going, trying to basically keep the city safe on his own to show that he has the talent to do it. And he's just beating down everyone he runs across, maiming everyone, except for the hordes of cute little man bats that are out there. <laughs> it's like man Talia bats. and her cute man bat army. They're adorable, man. <laughs> it's all this super stylized art from Hampton. Chris Hampton, I believe his name is. Okay. Or what's his name? Uh, yeah. Uh, no. I can't remember who did it. Whatever. Uh, they did a great job. It was very fun, but it's super stylized. It's it's very fun. Uh, but yeah, it's basically r- leading up to it where Alfred sends out Nightwing to wrangle up Damien, brings him back to the Batcave. They make him a new costume and say, hey, you want to be my Robin? And he's like... <sighs> No, but I'll follow along with you until I take the mantle off of your ass and I do it myself. <laughs> and it literally goes to the first panel of that first volume or of, uh, I guess it's not the first volume, the whichever volume Morrison's is of Batman and Robin. Like the last panel of this origin story is the first panel of that, that run. Nice. Yeah. It's a very well done thing. I, th- I quite enjoyed it. The main thing I like about this secret origins is it's all the creators of their books that are coming on to do these little mini stories. Yeah, it seems like it's not just little throwaway, uh, like stock stories. They're just sitting in a vault. No, I, yeah, they're bringing them in and they have ties in, uh, at least as far as they can pull stuff in their future story about it or they can just basically keep things hidden that they want to keep hidden a la in the green arrow we know who the guy was that was torturing him on the island and doing all those horrible things right brian we know this yes Mm -hmm. Uh, they purposefully keep it a secret so if you are interested and you go off and read it you can be like oh hey surprise didn't Mm -hmm. see that coming (laughs) so it's 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 interesting i like the way they're doing it that way the creators themselves get to decide what is a a viable fact to get out there and what isn't so that people can still enjoy their run while still having a good idea of 
who the characters are. Did Sorrentino draw the... Uh... No. Okay. No. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, uh, do I so, go again or do you no, go? No, it's me. It's uh, okay. All-Star Western 33. Ah. All right. Our bizarre favorite. Uh, so our weird favorite. Uh, old-timey West stories, usually kind of one and done sort of stories, but it's also been very stream of conscious. Like one story leads to the other. You could wind up a story will finish like three pages into the first issue and then it'll continue on for the rest of it. Very, very strange, but we love it. Yes. We love all star Western. It's It's, very gruff. It's, it's uh, it's very the West as it actually was. It's mm -hmm. not the bright and shiny West. There's almost always a point of view character who's standing alongside Jonah Hex, the, Usually scarred cowboy, Josh Brolin, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, uh, <laughs> who, who, you know, usually who's like kind of reacting like, Oh my gosh, the old West is terrible. And he's like, Yeah. You're, how, how are you not used to <laughs> Sounds kind of like Deadwood. Pro- possibly. It's, it's very similar. I've only to seen a handful of Deadwoods, but they're very good. And yeah. It's, it's got that kind Probably of less swearing. Story. I mean, yeah. there are little, there are little asterisks. We do have Tallulah Black this issue. Yes. Who is yes. our, our little swear monster. Yes. So we've, we currently Jonah Hex and his sometimes girlfriend, uh, Tallulah Black, who's a female bounty hunter whose face is all scarred up and it has the mouth of a sailor. And we love her for it. Those Old West sailors were the worst, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting in their dinghies the desert, right like, in the middle yeah. of the desert. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's why they were swearing so much. All right. So they, they, they've been kidnapped last issue. They were cast off they had they captured, were run out of town they were run out of town <laughs> they they captured a a very high stakes bounty person and then the town just sat down they were like kind of squatting and waiting for the authorities to come and pick him up said hey this guy's worth a lot of money let's kick them out and take the money for this bounty so they kicked him off they won't they ran into some uh rustlers and whatnot Tallulah's foul mouth gets him out of their problem just because she keeps swearing at them they're so dumbfounded by her audacity about everything she's able to distract them enough that they're able to get out yes she is not a wilting flower and they're like wow i'm kind of intrigued by this lady yes (laughs) i feel we should shoot her right proper (laughs) Mm -hmm. so uh, we cut back to the town that ran them out and they let uh blackthorn the bounty uh get kidnapped by even more bounty hunters it's like oh we did a bad job there so uh jonah hex and Tallulah, they go they get the Blackthorn guy back from the bounty hunters, kill them all, shooting, blood, murders, etc. And um, some poor kid from the city gets killed because he was trying to get the uh, guy back himself. Because apparently the town needed the bounty money on Blackthorn to play to pay for the medicine of their city because they have a tainted water supply. Yes, they accidentally mined into their well and, and yeah. made it bad. Yeah, so... Jonah, he goes soft, he goes, he gets the ransom, he buys the medicine for the town. I've been thinking the future made you soft, Jonah Hex. Yes, there was a brief period of time where he went to the future and got to meet like Swamp Thing and Superman and characters like that. Um, and he decided he, hate the pre- he hated the present day. Yes, uh, he hated it so much. Well, they were all like, you're going to have a hard time fitting in here. And then it literally, on top of the next page, it says six months later, and it's him easy riding on a motorcycle right down the highway with money flying out everywhere, drinking a beer. And he's like, yeah, the future's not that bad. <laughs> For girlfriend, you know? And then he goes back to the town to give them their medicine and finds out almost everyone's dead, except for one old lady. He's like, well, one old lady, you can have your medicine. <laughs> And then Tallulah Black just Take your to- vitamins and say your prayers, brother. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so Tallulah Black smacks him upside the head, and they go off to find their next adventure. I think we've only their got last the- adventure. Yeah, their last adventure. Their because last they're, they're adventure. Getting canceled. Yeah, gonna miss it. Yep. I'm definitely gonna miss it. But but we've got something new. Yes, because that one's ending. So the same creators, well, most of the same creators, Paul Miotti and Gray, the writers of All Star Western, and and this is the book that Hampton drew. They're doing a little title by the name of Star Spangled War Stories featuring G.I. Zombie. <laughs> I read it. You did? Yes. Mm-hmm. You I ga- did. I, ga- I gave it to him, yeah. I had I one, if, I, figured, I had time to catch up on like one thing. And that's and I, the one Brian And I figured said. if there was one, one issue that he could jump in and read, it was that one. It so. was, it was a good jump in issue being the number one and all. Yeah. Is when you read the title of that book and you closed the last page of that book, was that what you were expecting going into it? Uh, no, yeah, it was, it definitely, it threw me for a loop, I guess you could say. Okay. It's an odd idea. Because even I, even I It's a very, very odd idea. Yes. But 
it kind of grew on me by the end. Yeah, that the was the first kinda... couple pages were like, oh, sexist bikers, stereotypes, blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah. oh my God, we, we, they we shot this true, guy. But... We watched True yeah. Detective. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't hold a candle to that. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, and then all of a sudden there was that, uh, you know, that turn in there. And I, mean, I, I, I we're allowed to spoil, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's what we're yeah, gonna yeah. do. Well, go ahead and do yeah. Your, let me do get up to thing. that point, yeah, and yeah. then then we'll go from there. Uh, this is not a World War World War Two yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, zombie going around shooting Nazis, and that was kind of what I was thinking. Looking that's at the what cover, the cover looked like yeah. Yeah, that's uh, this is a Darwin Cook cover. Is that who did the cover on that one? I think that was yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a. <laughs> It's just not what I was thinking when I opened it up because we basically open it up on Sons of Anarchy is the the closest way That's I could really describe a, it. Yeah. Uh where watch that one, so. this this yeah. young lady by the name of Tiff has just moved into town and she is kind of sidling up to the bikers at the local biker bar to try to She's find a game. She's being a little too like, eager to sidle eager up to, to them. Yeah, yeah, a little obvious. No, a little bit. no woman really. <laughs> But maybe she's, all in like maybe she's looking for trouble. She's looking for trouble. And uh, oh, yes. unfortunately for her, worst timing ever, it happens to be when this biker gang runs across a federal agent who is parked outside yeah. watching their establishment. How they, convenient. I know. They beat this guy up. They haul him inside. And as they're about to take him in back to torture him to find out where the other feds are, they're like, hey, uh, maybe we shouldn't have the brand new girl here that's just magically showed up today when all this happened. Knowing all of our lingo and slang. <laughs> yes. Perhaps we should ask and her to really leave. eager to sleep with us, <laughs> yes. oddly enough. Yeah. And uh, she tr- goes, well, no, I'll convince you guys. I'll get the information out of them myself. And they're like, okay, well, let's see what she does. And she proceeds to question this guy. He does not give an answer. She Smacks him around. He does not give an answer. And we get our first dings of the episode <laughs> because she pulls out a machete after putting on a raincoat and chops the guy's arms off, or at least his hands at the wrist. Yep. And he's like, Blah! <laughs> and she's going, tell me where the other feds are. And he still will not tell her. So she turns around and shoots him clean in the head. The Drops to the ground dead, and the bikers are here kind of like, this lady is scary. (laughs) There was no hesitation there whatsoever. She just asked the question once. He didn't give the answer. She punched him once, didn't give the answer. Immediately escalated to chopping limbs off and then shooting in the head. Yep. Why even cut the limbs off if you're just going to shoot them in the head? Well, she asked him one more time in between just to see if maybe that might do. There was a machete lying in the corner. Are you not going to use the machete? Well, this dead body is tossed into her trunk because she's, this isn't her first time murdering people. As she tells the bikers, just toss them in my trunk. I'll dip, dump them off in the woods behind the motel I'm staying at right now. And, uh, they say, okay, well, yeah, when you're done with that, that's still not suspicious at all. No, <laughs> you come out of nowhere and then take the dead body with you. Okay. Like, you're the best. <laughs> can this you take care awesome. of all of our murders? <laughs> By the way, if you're heading across the border, can you just carry these bags? <laughs> Uh, what ends up happening though is she drives back to the motel, walks into her room, thumps down the body in there, and that's where we meet our newest character, our title character, the zombie with the scary name, the spooky name of Jared. <laughs> <laughs> G.I. Zombie Jared. G.I. Jared. G.I. Jared. Yo, Jared. <laughs> Uh, who is like, man, you, uh, you doing okay? I saw you throwing up there while I was stitching my hands back onto my body because that's what I have to do. Yeah. Ha ha ha. It's really weird when my head has to attach back on. So don't chop that off. He, 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 (laughs) he's very glib with his relationship with this lady. That's not the zombie type thing I was expecting. He's, he's like a he's like a proper soldier. He's got the weirdest like speech pattern. Yeah, he's even written out. Like man, like he's obviously a very unique character. Yeah, he's very like, regimented. But he's also got this like wry sense of humor about mm-hmm. his situation. He's he's a toned down Frankenstein. Is the closest yeah. I could put it. It's it's and a his body repairs him repairs itself he and he loses limbs all the time. Yes, <laughs> but, and he apparently can't be killed the same conventional way that zombies. No, are because he got shot in the head. Shot in the head. If yeah. he's a zombie, that's it. Maybe like, he's a super zombie. He's like a, a zombie government superhero. Experiment. Well, I'm guessing if he's a GI, it was some kind of government experiment going. Well, there's so many weird army people yeah. out there right now. There's unknown soldier who they basically just 
have multiple clones and then download his information into it. And there's a false memory that his family was killed by terrorists. Mm. So he goes out there and, and tries to murder every terrorist on the planet to avenge his non-existent family. That might be a real thing. Yeah, I know. Just a kind of, I know. Yeah. It's, it's disturbing <laughs> yeah. as all hell, but that was actually a very weird book. So maybe they, you'll get a future book where they explain some sort of like... There's a tank that's haunted yeah. by a Civil War general. <laughs> oh, I, I, love, I love haunted tank. <laughs> I mean, there's some weird army yeah. stuff out there right now. Uh, in this case, though, our uh, Tiff is going to bed. The The reason they're working together is that this biker gang has stolen a bunch of weapons from the U.S. military. They've found out that they're selling them off, and they mm-hmm. want to find the central cash so that they can reclaim the weapons for the army. Uh, Tiff's going to bed, and Jared goes out for a walk. Spooky Jared goes out for a walk and just happens to run across the most stereotypical wife beater on the face of the planet who is yep. quite literally beating his wife in the middle of the street and yelling at her why did you make me do this <laughs> because he wouldn't stop to let their kid go to the bathroom yes. and then she peed in the car yes so it's, and, it's and then fault. he beats the wife because yes. of yeah it wasn't wasn't really the most uh rational person really yeah. and that's when jared comes in to save the day by marching up going and then ripping this guy's arm off and eating his brains and, uh, of course, he, well, actually, the weird thing about this is he yells to the wife and the kid, I can't control myself from this point forward. Get in the car. Get out of here while you still can. Yeah. And they take off, and then he just eats the body and drags it off into the woods. So he has some control, maybe, until he starts feeding, and then that's where it's kind of a, like, a shark feeding frenzy type thing. Maybe, or I also maybe took that as just his way to get them out of there. Yeah, possibly. Like he probably. Yeah, I couldn't quite tell. Yeah. It was just a weird approach because he he was so clear in his diction and everything prior, yeah. and then when he sees the guy, he just starts walking, shambling up, even with the mm-hmm. arms outstretched, going Aah. almost like he's doing it as like a parody. Of some yeah, sort. yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was just like, yeah. it could be read multiple ways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he comes back, blood all over his shirt, and Tiff's like, "What the hell? Where'd you go? Uh, just a just a walk. I must have tripped onto some berries or something." Because uh, surely I didn't eat one of the locals. <laughs> I, I would never do something like that. And the two of them go off to find this hideout. After they hit a deer and he saves it, he carries it off to meet the mother. Well, he says that's what he did. I don't know if he just walked around the corner and ate it as a snack or he something. He probably did. <laughs> Comes back, found another berry bush. I don't know what's, uh, what it is about this area. <laughs> deer blood's almost as good as human blood. <laughs> And uh, they move along to the hideout where they find out that this biker gang not only has a bunch of automatic weapons, but Patriot missiles as well. It's the Sons of Anarchy with Patriot missiles. Mm -hmm. That would really change the next season if that's the direction they're going. (laughs) I really liked it. Yeah. For what I thought I was walking into, I am so depressed that I like it because it's basically I just signed myself up to an abusive relationship that's going to end very, very soon. I mm. hate being the guy that's the realist about it. I don't think I'm the only person that understands this book probably isn't going to have a hundred book, a uh, hundred issue run. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to have a shorter run, but I really liked this issue and I shouldn't have. I was intrigued by it because I just wanted to see what weird thing they were going to do to have a, a zombie book in this day and age right now after zombies have been so played out yeah to make it interesting and they found a way to make it interesting really interesting hook i I hope people give it a shot yeah it's it's probably the one of the better number ones i've read from dc in a while Mm -hmm. as far as hooking me in and making me actually like the characters even yeah artwork was gorgeous yeah yeah Yeah. it's it's a i want to almost say the tone is a new version of i vampire because okay. Vampire had kind of that weird, off-kilter, dark humor type stuff while still dealing with the supernatural and vampires and everything like that. So mm-hmm. in this case, we get zombies, but with still kind of an off-kilter weird humor. FBI crime stuff yeah. as well. When the zombie's yelling at the girl when after she hits a deer, you only had one job! <laughs> <laughs> And one of my favorite parts was uh, when they see the missiles and he explains to her what they are. And he's like, those things cost like millions of dollars. And she's like, I know how much they cost. <laughs> like, as if that's something that people just know. Yes. <laughs> well, she's obviously an agent, maybe, yeah, maybe a yeah. military agent as well. So I don't know if the, what they work for. I would hope shade or something like that. 
that would be the most appropriate. Yeah, or at least the, that's where he should end up after yeah. this book finishes. So they've got a lot of explaining to do. Yes, to fill in the gaps. Oh <laughs> yeah, and they have plenty of time to do way. it. Yeah. Plenty of time. So we'll see where it goes from there. At I, least eight issues. <laughs> at least eight issues. We'll see where it goes from there, though. So uh, I have another one though because it, it just matched up. Since we just did zombies, I'm going to do Justice League Dark because it's dark and spooky. It's a normal day. It's it's everyone's waking up for breakfast at the the house of mystery at Justice League Dark. Justice League Dark is basically the magic users Justice League. So like Zatanna and a uh, dead man and it's basically just all the ghosts and spooky characters and okay. they form their own Justice League. Constantine's in there as well. It's a uh, it's they handle all the Speaking of TV shows. Yes, exactly. Out, yeah. Uh, they handle all the spooky magic stuff, though, that the, the superheroes don't get involved with. Nice. Uh, so in this case, it looks like there's a relationship starting up between Dead Man and Nightmare Nurse. Dead Man loves that Hot Topic look. And uh, all of a sudden, while they're having their conversation, Dead Man has this huge vision where he gets pulled off into another dimension, and he finds the city of Nanda Parvat. Panda Narbot. Nanda Parva. <laughs> and he comes back after seeing all these screams and people that he recognizes, but he doesn't quite know who they are. He just seems to feel like he should know who they are. And he comes back to the real world, and he's kind of melting. And that's when Zatanna comes in, puts him back together, and he goes, Guys, 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 I know where Nanda Parvat is, and I have to go find it. So uh, can I get some leave? Can I take off? And Zatanna goes, No, we'll help you out, man. That's what we do. We're, we're a team. We'll do it. And they do cast a little spell of theirs, and it backfires. So they're like, oh, well, never mind about that whole team thing. We can't find it, so best of luck to you, man. <laughs> so he goes off on his own, and that's when he runs across Brahma Das. Is, am I pronouncing that correctly? I don't know. I didn't read it. Okay, well, it's the character that created Dead Man, the, the, uh, the Hindu god. I actually don't know that much about Dead Man, actually. Okay, well, Dead Man is a ghost. He was a high-wire act guy. And when he died, he ended up meeting a Hindu deity, basically, that uh, believed in balance and karma. Mm-hmm. So because he was such a jerk in life, he was given the opportunity to kind of balance the scales and be a nicer person and maybe find parody in the afterlife instead. And that's okay. what he decided to do. This Brahma Das, and I know it's it's a pretty common icon- iconography. 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 I can't agraphy. <laughs> <laughs> of the Hindu religion religion, but he does look like a guardian. He's like a shorter blue guy with Oh really? Yeah. I mean hmm. he just kinda looks like a guardian of the of the universe. It was just something that's kinda it's stuck the Green out Lantern to me. Thing. Yeah, it's the, the guys that are in charge of the Green Lanterns, the little hmm. blue guys. Uh so anyway, Brahmadash shows up and goes, Hey buddy, how's it going? Long time, no see. Uh, heard you're looking for Nanda Parbot. I can help you out with that. Come on outside. And he summons up a spectral dragon and uh, says, yeah, just hop on its back and it'll never ending story you right on over to the other dimension where Nanda Parbot is at. So Whoa. let's do it. So fly away. Do, 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 do. And they soar on over into this other dimension where it is a paradise. For lack of a better term, I mean, it's just utterly stunning. Nanda Parvat is there. It looks like there's hordes of people that are just absolutely having a blast. And uh, Brahma Das then goes, ha, 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 you sucker, you led me right here. Rips off his mask and turns off to be uh, not Old Man Dithers, but in this case, a giant demon person by the name of Pantheon. Is this a new character? Psh, doesn't okay. ring any bells. He calls himself the architect of paradise, and he's come to destroy this stupid Nanda Parvat. And he looks like a big demon wearing a neckerchief over his mouth. He looks like a demon bandit, honestly. Uh, the rest of the team, though, are like, man, I feel bad. We shouldn't have just sent Dead Man off on his own. Well, let's go find him and see if we can help. And they track him down. They're being attacked by these ghosts all over the place. And eventually they find out where he went, and they follow... And they show up to find Nanda Parvat in this place. This once paradise is now in ruins. And all over the place are these pantheon demons that are just kind of staring them down. And they're like, well, why do we follow Dead Man into these type of things? But we get one final scene, Brian, and this is of major importance. Okay. This is our chance to redeem ourselves from the last time this happened. Because Dead Man wakes up in a cell. Apparently, uh... Brahma Das locked him up after showing himself his pantheon. And he's like, oh, man, I'm kind of stiff. And he looks down and he sees 
that he is yet again not dead, dead man. <laughs> <laughs> not dead, dead man. Not dead, dead man. So hopefully we will not get now dead, not dead, dead man once more. <laughs> mm-hmm. Undead, dead man. We Thank had undead, good. not dead, dead oh, man already, actually yeah. also. The problem was he got, he brought, brought back to life. And literally the next panel, someone shot him in the head, so he died again. It was a ghost. And then he was going back and forth trying to get back into his body once more, so he was not not dead dead man that was now dead. He needs whatever powers uh, G.I. Zombie Jared He had. does. Apparently those headshots the do headshots nothing to him. The headshots do nothing to him. But ghosts, they do nothing. you shoot a ghost in the head, and apparently it's, it's game over, man. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like this direction a little bit more because Dead Man's kind of one of my favorite characters on the team, only because of that. Because uh, you like the not dead Dead Man joke, the not dead Dead Man stuff, pretty much. <laughs> I I was in tears last time when we had to deal with that. Yes. <laughs> uh, what's your All last right, book I'm for this? Finishing half, up though? the half with Future's End. All right, Scott. Future's End is it's a weekly series. There's a new issue every single week, and it is about. Oh, let's see. What's a concise way to say this? Um, you know, Bat- remember the Batman Beyond cartoon? You ever watch that one? Uh, a little bit. Not you're, as you're much least, as the animated series. You're, you're at least aware of it, though. Aware of it, yeah. Okay, around the era of the uh, Batman Beyond time stream, uh, this gigantic robot artificial intelligence named Brother Eye basically takes over the world. So, in a last ditch effort, uh, you know, old Batman sends the young Batman, Batman Beyond, back in time to try to stop it. Uh, he shows up uh, a little too late. And so now he's got to try to figure out, okay, so this brother eye has already been created. I've got to figure out a way to stop it. And it's also taking, and even though he got sent back in time, it's actually five years later than all of the current continuity stories we're reading. So we get a lot of conjecture and we find out about like, there's hints at big events that are coming up in the stories soon. And it's just, you know, weird, like slightly dystopian future, but not that's dystopian. It's kind the, the, of like an end media res where we get five years in the future going on here, and then the stuff in the current day is yeah. kind of backfilling everything right. up to that point. There doesn't point. seem to be a non-dystopian future in any fiction, well, really. Have we found one dy- yet? Yeah. This know. one's extra dystopian, though. Yeah. Well, well, this the, is like the dystopian, far future where double everyone, order. Well, the, the far future where everyone is spider robots and eating each other, yes, that's a super dystopian. <laughs> it's not that dystopian right now, five years from now. Yeah. Green Arrow died, but, you know, it's that's not That's why worst. it's dystopian. Well, yeah. <laughs> Without Green Arrow to shepherd them to the mm-hmm. bright future ahead, it's just all downhill yeah, from there. Yeah, it's downhill. So, <laughs> Who would have kept them straight as an arrow? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they said no more puns. That wasn't a pun. Okay. That was a philosophy. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to try to fill you in on the characters we put up with. A lot of characters we don't normally deal with showing up this week. Yes. So um, Frankenstein, he's leading a team. Our favorite. Uh, yes, our favorite Frankenstein. DC Universe Frankenstein is one of the best things, period. I'll just leave. I'll just throw it out there, and that's all I need to say. Take Frankenstein. Is it as good as I Frankenstein starring Aaron Eckhart? <laughs> no, not no. quite. Not, not quite. quite. Almost <laughs> nothing <laughs> can top that. Yeah. It's it's Frankenstein in a giant Cossack coat with a a flintlock magic gun and a giant sword of the archangel, and he just runs around shooting things and hacking them up with his sword, and, and he's being like awesome. Yes. He's too badass for everyone else, and yeah. then he just kind of knows it, so he just wanders off whenever the story's done. <laughs> Is he, like, not even scared of fire? No, he doesn't like fire. He's not no, a fan of it. Fire bad. Fire bad. But he's more like, <sighs> fire, guys, really? Uh, you know how like, I like, feel he, about that. He's, he's like Indiana Jones and snakes. It's not the end of the yeah. world, but he's not a fan of it. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so he is off in space. Um, you should put him on a plane with fire. Why'd it have to be? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Frankenstein, he's flying through space with Hawkman and uh, Princess Amethyst. that's where you put Frankenstein, right? Space. Yeah. Yeah. That's the last place you always put the horror villains. Yeah. <laughs> so they're flying through flying through space. Uh, they're trying to find this uh, DC super team named Stormwatch who had been uh, murdered, but there's a distress signal on their frequency. So they're like, okay, at least some, one of them survived somewhere. They're trying to find it. Uh, they got taken out by some... They flew by some random planet. They got shot down. They fell into a gigantic satellite dish, and then they get assaulted by Brainiac robots. And then they get assaulted by the Engineer, who is a member of Stormwatch, who has now been taken over by Brainiac. So somehow Superman villain Brainiac is off in space, affecting the greater story that's happening in this book. So do you think Brainiac was the thing they ran across out there? 
when the alarms went off and killed Apollo and everything? I don't know. I mean, well, somehow engineer got assimilated, but that almost seems too easy. Okay. Fair know. enough. I'm just curious if you thought that was a, a false lead or what. Yeah, I don't know, because the, there's that parasite robot running around on yeah. Earth, and that's also been tied in with some Brainiac iconography, so I do not know. I do not know. Uh, we check in with King Faraday. Who, Best name ever. Yes, King Faraday. Uh, he's <laughs> he's like a he's like an X-Files agent kind of guy. We don't know who he really works for, but he's going around doing shadowy government type things. And he goes and he talks to some punker girl named Courtney, who wants to be called Mercy, and I assume these were all like image characters or something. It must be. I mean, I heard a few people like, well, I didn't hear. I saw online when I was trying to figure out who it was. Some people were saying like, oh my God, they ruined Stargirl, but Stargirl's already shown up in the series as yeah. Stargirl. So yeah. it's not her. It's just someone else named Courtney. And uh, she used to work for him. Uh, he explains that uh, King Faraday, we find out he has a mad on for superheroes. He thinks that people who, you know, have superpowers, they got cursed somehow. And so he'll use them to his end, but he wants to, quote unquote, cure every one of their superpowers. So all of these. Usually by killing them. All know? of these superheroes hit an old gypsy lady, and her last words were like, super bad. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So he's trying, so he's trying to cure them, uh, and then. I After- never see any old gypsy ladies. They've all been hit by superheroes with their cars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he le- he threatens Courtney, then he uh, leaves. I Courtney lose co- 10 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney goes, uh, then calls up Voodoo, who is another image character we just got reintroduced to last yes. week. Well, Wildstorm, I suppose, if you want to say that. Uh, who Wild used to- cats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So Courtney talks to Voodoo, who used to work with her, and they refer to these another set of characters called the Twins. So I'm sure that's someone else that we'll be running into in the next few weeks. But I like that scene a lot. Even even more new characters to add onto the story. That was a fun scene though when Voodoo calls up the Twins with uh the Judith Freelander guy. Yeah. And uh they're like, "Yeah, sorry, some guys came in to attack us. We just have to murder them real quick. Can we put you on hold?" And she's like, "Yeah, that's cool." And then it's just do 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 do. Oh, go from Infinima. I like this one. And while well, Judah the Freelander guy is just standing up to says, like, what's going on? Why are you murdering everyone? the weirdest <laughs> conversation possible. Why do I hang out with you people? Uh, checking with Rampage, who's basically a Lady Hulk in the DC universe. Uh, she st- uh, busted this guy named Ethan Boyer out of, uh, prison. He's a brilliant geneticist and he wants her to, he wants, she wants him to help cure her. Because uh, she used to be a scientist as well, a yeah. geneticist, and then, whoops, accidentally experimented on herself. And now I'm a Hulk. Uh, so he wants to show she wants him to cure her. And so when he goes to cure her, he also says, you know what? You're more of a use to me as a gigantic rage monster. So I'm going to put this little thing on your head that uh, makes you dumb and mindless. And I'm going to make you even more powerful. And I'm going to stick you on Superman to be to distract him so I can go off and do my evil geneticist things. Boop, 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 boop. While he's texting people for parties and yes. stuff? Like, the entire time he's taking selfies while he's doing it and just what? texting people like, hey, be at the party soon. <laughs> he's like just he's like a Justin Timberlake in uh, The Social Network as an evil geneticist. Ah. <laughs> Instagram in his exploits. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, we suddenly jump back to 35 years in the future. In yeah. It was super dystopian time. I never thought we were going back to that timeline, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So Brother I, he's it's we the see, darkest timeline. <laughs> yeah, the, it is the darkest timeline. So Brother I is keeping the Joker alive so he can turn him into a spider robot. It's time for you to become a spider robot, Joker. Or is he? Maybe. We'll, Do we'll you just, think? We'll, we'll go along from there. Okay. So like robot fat Lobo and ev- evil dystopian. Just Robo. Yeah, it's just yeah, Robo. Just Robo yeah. <laughs> Dystopian future Frankenstein who's got Black Canary's head sewn onto his chest. Ah, uh, they come and they, they t- cart him away. Fat and jo- robot and- Lobo. How can you not just call him Robo? <laughs> yes. So the Joker, he laments his fate. And then when they get to the operating table, they see Batman lying there. We thought he died in the first issue. He did not. Old grizzled missing old, an arm. Old, old Ding! Grizzled, yeah, old grizzled missing an arm Batman. And uh Joker sees this, and he just starts laughing at the absurdity of their fates. 
And that's how we close the issue. It seemed more like he thought he was the only human left, like the only person left alive yeah. other than these spider robots. And to find out that an old, yeah. grizzled, angry Batman is the only other yeah. person alive is just too damn funny if for him. If they sewn together into some kind of human centipede robot, I just don't know, man. <laughs> Joker would think that's I hilarious. I am hoping we do not get a Batman, Joker, human centipede. That's I, that's kind of where I draw yeah. the line on the darkest time. If they've got two heads like that Simpsons episode where they're just bickering with each other, I would love that, actually. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately. But what do you do with it once you have it? Just well, put it in a room? Well, it's the future. well, you know, it's the future. It'll all get rewritten anyway. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, still no word on former Red Robin Tim Drake, who, as we all know, is currently living under the name Blunderbuss Rumpelshunt. Jeez. He's been having this running joke because he doesn't like the silly name that this guy's using as his secret identity. <laughs> so, what was it last week? Rooster T. Ro- Clutterbuck or whatever? Yes, yes. Yeah. What's the actual name that the guy's uh, using? Cal Corcoran. Cal Corcoran. It's just a silly alliterative name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he's just been making up names every week, mm-hmm. okay. ever since. It's kind of driving me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's why I keep doing it. And that's it for this half. Seemed like another yeah. segue issue, though. So, yeah, it's it's been a little slow the past two weeks. I'm hoping we catch back up with some of our friends soon enough. I wasn't sure if there that have been was... like eight or nine storylines running concurrently, and it's all obviously and, and building towards something bigger. Every single storyline keeps adding two characters every issue to its story. Mm. So we're getting to this point where we just have a bunch of, and they're all like low, low CDZ list characters. We're not, mm. they're not AB characters that people know. So it's a lot of wait, who's who's this again? Okay, yeah. that's. That's Mercy now, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like watching The Wire. It's yeah, it's a lot like watching The Wire, too. honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I still but is it wire. worth it? Like The Wire? Yeah. We will I don't know. Find, we'll yeah, find we, out it's, in it's about a limited series, or 40 so. issues. Ah, so. okay. It's basically they were going to run it for nine months. Every week an issue comes out. So it, it, it's, at it's, the end of nine months, you get one full story, but you get a chapter every week. On ah, Wednesday, okay. DC's so w- kind of trying out this whole weekly thing because uh, after the break we have another weekly book, and then in another month or so we have an, a third weekly book starting up as well hmm. to see if the, the people because a month's a long time to to wait in between. As I've said yeah. before, people listen to this show. We get the four weeks ago episode always gets a huge spike in listenership because people refresh themselves off of what was happening and all the issues that came out the month oh. prior before they go pick up their books on Wednesday. And then, ta-da, and then they're up back up to date, and they just jump in and read their book. Yes. And they're like, where's this Rooster T. Clutterbuck guy that they keep talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you guys reap all the benefits. Mm-hmm. Yep. All the all benefits, benefits as we all roll in benefits. our pile of gold coins. Yep. from. <laughs> I'm just like Scrooge McDuck. You built the vault already? Mm-hmm. Man. Yep. Doing better than me. Well, the last time I was here, you guys wanted a Peabody, right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. No, we. Oh. I think Peabody was on TV. Is that what it <laughs> Mr. is? Mr. Peabody was yeah. on, and we were like, hey, we got oh, a Peabody. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That'll wrap up this half of the show. Brian, what do you have coming up for round two? I'm finishing up Zero Year with Batman. I've got Catwoman, the final leg of the race of thieves, I yeah. guess. Uh, Wonder Woman 33 and Red Lanterns. And then I have, as I was saying, another weekly Batman Eternal number 16. The absolutely bonkers is the only way I can put it. Batman and Robin number 33. Uh, Aquaman number 33. And I will end the show with Pandora number 13. It's penultimate issue. So hold on a couple seconds. We're going to take a couple seconds break and we will pick it up from there. Starting off the bat half with Batman Eternal number 16. You guys remember what's happening in this one, right, Brian? Why don't you yeah. give me a recap? Um, Batman. Okay, yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that's it. Batman's doing bat things. Yeah. <laughs> the millions of ancillary bat characters are doing stuff as well. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll mm-hmm. start off with some of the side characters. There's been this, there's a gang war in Gotham City. First time ever. Mm-hmm. Never had that what? happen before. <laughs> Uh, but it's, it was between the Penguin and uh, Carmine Falcone. 
and it ended up with this this new hotshot lawyer, or I'm sorry, new hotshot police officer named Lieutenant Bard, who set up a whole bunch of kind of shady dealings to get them both arrested, and uh, he has kind of turned over a new leaf after Batman scolded him about it, and he's trying to go by the book, and he's basically out there cleaning up all the remnants of the gangs. And that's when he's met by Vicky Vale. Is that her name? Yeah, Vicky Vale. Vicky Vale. Thank you. Vale. I, I was I was confused because you didn't do that. I was okay. like, maybe I said the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> Who is asking him a whole bunch of questions and hitting on him and says, hey, we should go out for a drink after this. And Lieutenant Bard is basically just going, uh, are you in it for me or for the story? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, meanwhile, as usual, I'm trying to get all the side little ancillary character stories out of the way first. We head on over to Tokyo where Red Robin is running around with Harper slash Grifter, uh, Harper with her Grifter mask on, uh, when they are attacked by nanobots. These little tentacles come out of the walls and they're trying to track down the guy that's making these nanobots that attack Gotham City at one point. Of course, the entire time Red Robin's yelling at Harper Row that she's in over her head and she, of course... Uh, hacks into these little nanobots and turns them off and goes, ta-da, I'm more useful than you, Red Robin. Ha-ha, <laughs> you're such a chump in the New 52. Ah, I'm so much better than you. <laughs> and we get to see the guy that actually made the nanobots, that Sir Guy guy, and uh, Sir Guy, Sir Guy, Sir Guy, mm. Sir Guy. <laughs> he ends up coming out and he's like, ah, oh, you did it. You You toppled it out. You passed my test. I'm so happy about that. Now we can move forward from there. And that's where we leave that story. And the rest of this issue, the the main chunk of it, we're heading back into Arkham Asylum, Brian. Okay. We're we're following up on Corrigan, uh, Jim Corrigan, is that his name? Jim Corrigan the Spectre. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Batwing, who have gone into the, the haunted house that is Arkham Asylum. Basically, Arkham Asylum, of course, is where they house all the bad guys. After they catch him. I know that much. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. I'm just tossing it out there. <laughs> uh, it seems like some sort of magical thing has happened at Arkham Asylum that has made it look like they were locking everyone up, but actually the inmates have just been running roughshod inside, murdering everyone that comes in, and just having weird sacrifices. and Chopping off everyone's arms. Yeah, everyone that comes into the building, they chop off their arm, and it's just very weird. But we, I do find out why in this issue. Because Corrigan is talking to Mr. Bygone, the guy whose superpower is to let bygones be bygones, as we found out last week. <laughs> uh, he lost his arm, and he's like a weird, wasted, spectral-type person. Doesn't look like the uh, Dungeon Master from uh, Dungeons & Dragons this week. He okay. looks a lot different. But he is missing an arm, and he's basically taking everyone else's arm out of spite, I guess? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, he's trying to steal Corrigan's powers, though, and it's just not working. Corrigan eventually overpowers him with his Spectre power type things. He doesn't let the Spectre out, but he does like his woogie woogie and overpowers him and ends up escaping off into the catacombs. Now, in the catacombs below Arkham Asylum, Batwing has been tied up by a character by the name of Joker's daughter. That's her name. She All is right. not the Joker's daughter. She mm. was a regular... I guess regular suburban teenage girl. Well, maybe she was Steve Miller's daughter. Possibly. Not like the Joker Joker. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. maybe. That would honestly make more sense. But she yeah. found the severed face of the Joker in the sewer, sewed it on her own <laughs> face, and then has been going around murdering people in the name of the Joker since. Uh huh. Her Joker's daughter thing is she calls the Joker daddy, not in a parental way, it seems. <laughs> Yeah, I follow. Okay. Unfortunately. It's, Unfortunately. I yes. Know. Yeah, it's it's a very it's a very weird character. We we have not really warmed up to her yet. No, not at all. <laughs> um so she has Batwing tied up to the wall and comes over the comm system on Batwing. Batwing basically is a, another one of the protégés of Batman uh who has a more technological Iron Man Batman armor essentially. Mm-hmm. And he comes, ac- she comes across the comms, turns it on to talk to Batman, perfectly mimics Batwing's voice and says, Hey, Batman, everything's cool here. We took care of this thing. You don't need to swing by here ever. Good job. Thanks for giving us the tip. Batman's like, Hey, cool. Thanks for taking care of that for me. And he goes off to handle his stuff. And Batwing's like, Hey, uh, how do you do the whole voice thing? Cause you sounded just like me. And she's like, This place is magical. <laughs> We don't know why, but I can. Just in this little cavern, I have the ability to mimic anyone's voice. It's awesome, isn't it? 
He's like, no, not really. That's kind of lame. Not really my favorite character. I haven't warmed up to you either. (laughs) And she's about to chop off his arms as well when he breaks free. And she, in her defense, calls upon Maxi Tiny Lister Zeus, I guess. (laughs) This character by the name of Maxi Zeus, who we saw before had his arms chopped off. Mm -hmm. They've been re-sewn back on in this case. And he is a hollow shell. Like he's just a zombie type person marching towards Batwing. He's throwing everything he has at him, trying to shock him, trying to gas him, sonics and everything, and he just keeps plodding forward like he feels nothing whatsoever, and he has no, his eyes are vacant, he doesn't quite know where he is or what he's doing, and he's just trying to beat the crap out of Batwing, and that's when Batwing kind of gets one up on him, knocks him over, and whoop, 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 runs off into the catacombs himself. He finds some guy that's kind of uh, one of the guards of Arkham that's lying on the ground complaining about how he's in so much pain. And then he collapses and a ghost comes out of him after consuming all of his innards or something. Okay. <laughs> Again, this is kind of the haunted Typical house. Typical ghost stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is the haunted house Arkham. He could have just shot it in the head. We know that's the weakness of ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but... He is saved by Corrigan, who comes out and does a little woogie woogie magic of his own that knocks away the ghost. And before the two can escape, it turns out that the person that's been behind all of this spooky, spooky Arkham Asylum stuff has possessed the body of Maxi Zeus and comes marching around the corner. And we find out it is none other than Deacon Blackfire, who's been teased earlier in this uh, when they had all the stuff with uh, Dr. Phosphorus and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Prior to that, he was the guy that led a cult that Batman was part of. They okay. brainwashed him and everything. Not Starfire's sister. No, 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 no. Also no. happens to be named Blackfire. No. Whoops. Yeah, she got she got her uh, deacon ship and uh, decided yes. to move mm-hmm. underneath Arkham. Yeah. Preach there in the catacombs. Yep. With the guy with the coat of many pennies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Who rides a Viking boat yes. through, <laughs> underneath, underneath, through the sewers. Through the sewers underneath Arkham. <sighs> Joker's ah. daughter. Joker's daughter. Joker's daughter, <laughs> indeed. Uh, it, it, I'm kind of intrigued about this whole Arkham thing. It's very weird. It's so not Batman. Yeah. But it's still ancillary characters. Doesn't I don't, mean it can't be Batman. Is the Spectre considered an ancillary character of Batman? Not that I'm aware of. Because I know of. he's a GCPD cop. Is Corrigan a GCPD cop? Yeah, he, he was, was like a, a priest originally. No, he's a GCPD cop that Phantom Stranger led off into an ambush that got killed and okay, cause harnessed the power of the Spectre. There was a period of time where they they got a new Spectre. Uh, it was original Spectre Corrigan. Then it went to Hal Jordan for a while for yeah. some reason, and then it was and then it switched off to uh, one of the uh, Gotham Central police officers. Okay, so it almost seems like they're kind of merging the first and third together. Into a singular character. That's now. fine. They can streamline yeah. it oh, if yeah. they want, but mm. uh, I he just doesn't quite fit in with the rest of the story that's going on. It seems. I mean, they're not using his super godly "I am the Specter of Ra- of God's Wrath" stuff. Obviously, he's keeping that bottled up because it would just kind of ruin all of the fun here. He would just kind of cleave through everything. Yeah. And just be like, smote, 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 smote. Hit the smote button. And uh, we're done with Batman Eternal. <laughs> Uh, so what do you got next, yeah, Brian? I'm, I'm intrigued to see how they tie in all the supernatural stuff with everything else that's going on. Yeah, that's the... how I know how DC tries to run their weekly books. I'm intrigued to see how it all comes together. Yeah, it's in the end. it's the most far flung side story of all mm-hmm. the ones going on. Okay, so going on to Batman 33, the big, great, big, grand, epic finale to the Batman Zero Year retelling of Batman's origin for the new 52 continuity. The big, great, big, grand? Mm Mm-hmm, great, big, grand. So uh, Riddler has Batman in a death trap, tells him some riddles, Batman answers them with a little help from his friends, and uh, beats the Riddler. Gotham is saved, Batman protects the city now. And then in the aftermath, Alfred introduces Bruce. <laughs> that was a very concise recap, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then in the uh, aftermath, uh, Alfred does he have pet lions like the cover? No, no. He, he, he choked them out. He choked them out a uh, Roddy Piper style uh, <laughs> last issue. So in the aftermath, Alfred introduces Bruce to a girl he knew in school, and then Bruce gives up being Batman and gets married and has all of the babies. The end. It's was like, there a scorpion? Just kidding. Batman. <laughs> Alfred was just imagining things. Batman is really married to hating crime. 
He is married to hating crime. Yeah. <laughs> now, when he had all the babies, were there scorpions present? There were no scorpions. Well, of course, it was a dream sequence yeah, then. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> not did one, he have not one hair upon his chest? Oh man, that's just a travesty right there. Mm. <laughs> I I did like that epilogue though. That was probably my favorite part of the issue. Mm-hmm. Was just him kind of going through what Bruce's life would be like if he just gave up right then. Right at the beginning and mm-hmm. just went to, and then they met at a Italian restaurant drinking a glass of wine and it, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> the precious Cat to me, sir. <laughs> That's my dead on Michael Caine impression. Yeah. I mean, it, every single time he does it, I'm just it's, like, it's like, Michael Michael Caine. like Michael Caine's in the room. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's these monitors. I can't see them. So I just assume Michael Caine took his place mm-hmm. every time. You know, one time I was at the, uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame stars by the Chinese theater. I stood in Michael Caine's footprints and they were exactly the same size as my feet. So you're, you're his, Michael Caine. You're Michael Caine's foot doppelganger. <laughs> yep. Man, if he ever needs a foot model, <laughs> yeah, foot I, body double, you're right there. Maybe if it's Man. like a flashback to like what you want to do feet <laughs> is is pitch for Michael Caine to be in Footloose two, yes. and then you could be like his little dancing feet double. Like whenever it. the camera does its little B shot there of him dancing around, that could be you right there. <laughs> I'm just I'll, trying to help you get your career off the ground. I'll here. bring it up Monday at the studio big meeting thing I've got going. This yes. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if everyone's back from Comic-Con in time. Yes. <laughs> but at least traffic will be okay. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's never okay. No. <laughs> uh, so next book up, my zany, zany Batman and Robin number 33. I know you were here for this part, Scott, because if you remember Damien, Batman's biological son, he died. And I believe the last time you were on, he was still in the five stages of grief going around as Rage Batman, killing everyone. I do remember that pretty well. Well, he got over that and decided, okay, well, I'm going to have to move on with my life. My son has died. And as soon as he got to that point, uh, Ra's al Ghul came and dug up his son's body as well as uh, the Talia al Ghul, his daughter's body, and took them off to try to resurrect them in one of his Lazarus pits. And he was like, I just got over this whole thing. So he's been trying to chase down Ra's al Ghul to get the bodies back. And then a bunch of fourth world gods showed up to steal the body themselves and take it off to an- another planet <laughs> and plane of existence. And that was kind of where we left it off. So basically the super big bad guy of the DC universe is a guy by the name of Darkseid. Mm-hmm. You've probably seen him in some of the cartoons yeah, at some yeah, point. Yeah. Uh, he's These are his people, the people of Apocalypse who came and stole... Uh, basically they were after the crystal that Ra's al Ghul was using to make the, these pools resurrect people. And he was storing it inside the sarcophagus that Damien's body was in and it got some of the residual energy. So they took it off to Apocalypse. And Batman, of course, now thinks, well, hey, I can actually get this kid resurrected and have my boy back. So I'm going to Apocalypse to get my kid. And the rest of the Justice League came by last issue to kind of help him out, to save him from all these people that were attacking him. And stopped him from going to Apocalypse. He's like, guys, it's my kid. I'm going after my kid. You can't stop me. And the rest of the Just League are going, uh, you're Batman. You have no powers whatsoever. You got some nifty toys and everything. You going to Darkseid's planet is basically you committing suicide. We're not going to let you do it. And uh, he goes, well, you're not the boss of Tiger Bot Batman. Hijack Cyborg and turns <laughs> on his boom tube and gets boosh, teleported <laughs> off. Do you even get that reference? Uh, a little bit. You're no. not the boss of Tiger Bot Hash. <laughs> see it was Lab just 2021. Funny for some reason. Yeah. I love to see Lab 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch. I did used to watch that, but I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, he ends up getting teleported off, and the rest of them go, "Okay, we should probably go after him." The best part is though, Lex Luthor and Captain Cold are kind of fanboying. Lex Luthor and Captain Cold have joined the Justice League. After Lex Luthor helped save the world when all the villains took over. Ah. And Captain Cold was on his team to help him out. They're straight up villains, but they've joined the Justice League and they're trying to well, turn Captain over a new Cold, leaf. Captain Cold's got, he is, he's one of the He's a villains. rogue with morals, yes. yes he, he's got a, he at least had a moral code, so it's not completely a... No. But they out are... Of, out, of the, out of the question for But they are so totally good. fanboying because Batman basically just tells the Justice League to screw off all the time. And they're like, man, Batman just does whatever he wants. That's kind of badass. That's cool. <laughs> we should do that too. Hey, guys, screw you. We're doing what we want. <laughs> 
But they go following after Batman because he used the teleporter thing to go back to the watchtower, their big spaceship up in orbit. And he punches in a code on this wall and opens up and it displays basically the super ultra mega uh, laser luge Batman armor that he has been looking for all this time. The Hellbat. The Hellbat armor. (laughs) Now, the rest of the team show up and go, Batman, you can't take that armor. We helped you put that together because we felt bad you didn't have powers, (laughs) but it was there to protect you. We, We don't want you to, you know, use it to go storm Apocalypse. He's like, I can do with it what I want. They're like, you don't understand what we had to go through to make that. And uh, this is very much a, a Lord of the Rings type page because they tell how this thing was made. And it's uh, designed by Cyborg from every computer system on Earth. Forged from the Iron of Hephaestus within the core of the sun by Superman. Quenched in the deepest seas by Aquaman's famous blacksmith octopuses. <laughs> Tempered with the magics of ancient Greece by Wonder Woman. Detailed by Green Lantern's ring and run around really, really fast with by the Flash. It was the, the spin cycle so you can get rid of all the water from Aquaman stuff. I just th- thought they felt bad and they were like, I don't know, Flash, just run around with it for a little bit. He was like, woo, 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 woo. Like the Olympic torch. Yeah. Symbolic. <laughs> and he's like, so this is my thing. This is my Hellbat armor. I'm going to take it. And they're like, no. And he's like, yes. And they're like, no. And of course it breaks off into a big scuffle because he wants to take it anyway. And finally he goes, you know what? Screw you guys. I give up. I'm going home. You guys all suck. And he just kind of wanders off back to his house. We do get a quick aside on Apocalypse where we see that Damien's body and the crystal has been delivered to none other than Calabac. We talked about him before. The Is he like a, a son of Darkseid or something? One of them, yeah. We had his toy growing up. That's all I know about him. He oh, squeezes okay. legs and he punches. That's what I know about <laughs> Calabac. <laughs> Well, he's the he guy. Has, that's he has in, a car that has a boulder uh, catapult on it. <laughs> nice. He is the guy. Hey, sign him up for the race of thieves. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's basically the one in charge. It looks like of of glorious Godfrey. I guess he's like a high ranking general from the context clues that we got in this issue. I don't know much about the guy. Uh, back on Earth, though, Batman goes back home and he's staring at the grave of his son that's been dug up and stolen. And he goes into rage mode, Batman, and basically just kicks down the tombstone into the ground below and buries it. Like, I know he's not going to be dead. I'm still going to save him. Superman shows up, who has, for all intents and purposes, walked off the Justice League since Lex Luthor joined. That's As why he, he would. Yeah, that's he why he's not enemy there. Joins the team. Yeah, he, that's why he wasn't up at the Watchtower during that whole conversation. He, luckily, he was there in time to forge the armor in the core of the sun, mm-hmm. but. <laughs> Uh, and he's like, hey, Bruce, heard about what happened, man. I guess they're all on Facebook friends and someone yeah. posted it up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to say The Flash myself. <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah, kind of sucks. He's like, you know, if I was there, I would have spoke up for you. Yeah, but you weren't there. So what are you going to do? Well, if there's anything I can do, Batman, you just let me know. Me and you, bros the end. Bro fist. Psh, psh, and <laughs> Superman flies off. Batman storms down into the bat cave below. St- suits up essentially and then walks out into the main antechamber there and finds the rest of the bat family as far as batgirl red hood uh alfred and red robin and goes oh good you're all here already so uh we can basically just say screw the justice league and do this ourselves so go team raye let's do it booyah just he- what the hell is up with the hell bat armor, man? We talked about this last week where we've kind of left the street crime Batman this stuff behind. Pure, this. this is pure comic books. Yes. I mean, the this Batman is... and Robin series has become pure distilled comic book. And it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Love Gleason's art as usual. Captain Cold looks awesome standing around with the rest of the Justice League. He does. He fits I in. I hope that sticks. Yeah. He fits in disturbingly. This is a dude with a freeze ray and some cool looking sunglasses, but I don't care. I'm hoping. They at least run across the rogues once while yeah. he's on the Justice League. I just have to see that that whole setup right mm-hmm. there. <laughs> I absolutely adore this book. I think Gleason's going to be the main part that people are either going to love or hate. I absolutely adore it. I've said it multiple, yeah. multiple times. His Calabac looked really cool. Yeah, the the designs and the style. He gets a lot of emotion and tone. I mean, it's it's basically down pat. These guys were the ones that pat, made me actually. Down pat. Yeah, but um, uh, <laughs> these guys are the ones that made me actually like Damien. These guys are the ones that uh, they're not like him. I liked him before that, but at least make him so that it was a 
It felt like he fit in with the rest of the universe. Yeah, it really was sewn together well. And when he died and the stuff that sometimes was going it t- on. Sometimes it takes someone besides the person that created the creator to kind of get into the head of a character and really help you show, yes, this is an established character that fits in with everyone else. Well, not to mention, as we've heard before, Damien wasn't supposed to survive that yeah. first trade. So, I mean, I don't know if he was completely fleshed out by Morrison as he wanted as he continued on. Yeah. And I mean obviously he found his path and his voice as he went, but mm-hmm. this was kind of a, you know what? I'm going to keep this guy around. People seem to be kind of intrigued by him and they kind of went from there whereas Tomasi's been writing him incessantly, incessantly yes. since the start of the new 52 and it's been kind of great honestly mm-hmm. to, say, to say the least of it. Uh, I recommend this book. Really, really. This Robin Rises thing is, as you say, distilled comic books. Yes. To its, its essence, and it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Speaking of fun. Oh! I'm going on to Catwoman 33. Yes! It's the final leg of the Race of Thieves. And I think it's our second to last issue of uh, Nichenti writing this. <gasps> oh, okay. So, now, Catwoman is super mad that Roulette a noted lowlife criminal and bumfight organizer has rigged <laughs> has rigged the race of thieves that she created and wrote the rules for a race that included a fight on her front lawn a poorly explained theft at a frozen mansion and a literal race that had absolutely nothing to do with the first two legs that was quite literally wacky races in the DCU yes. how right. dare she change the rules of the thing she made the rule for <laughs> That we didn't know the rules, mm-hmm. too. <laughs> yes. And then, uh, mean, so Catwoman's meeting up with her, you know, criminal Scooby-Doo team. And uh, Alice Tesla, who, you know, you go to for high-tech goods at low, low prices. That's right. Um, she points out that there were gaslights at the lawn fight. <laughs> so that means that Roulette was gaslighting her, trying to gain her <laughs> trust. She was also eating chicken parmesan. The, so- the sauce of the chicken parmesan was red, so what's black and white and red all over? A zebra with a sunburn. So that means roulette must be robbing the Gotham Zoo at noon. <laughs> this all makes perfect sense, right, Sean? We found it at C, and what else is it starts with C? Catwoman! <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, after she finds out that roulette was gaslighting her because of a clue from four issues ago that no, it was never pointed out whatsoever... <sighs> Catwoman checks in on her day job as a top-ranking suicide hotline volunteer slash deputized Gotham City police detective. She consults with hotshot freelance coroner Eddie yes. Gilbert. The, let's let's not pretend and not forget she was given the whole uh, freelance police thing. She was deputized by someone that's not a member of the police, mm-hmm. so she she actually a deputized <laughs> police oh, she officer. She is. So, she was deputized by a freelance coroner. Yes. <laughs> okay. So he didn't manage to solve the case of a Victoria Viceroy is conveniently connected to the Race of Thieves cold case murder since it looked like all of her kids tried to kill her at once. So now he'll never get rid of Viceroy, her great granddaughter, to love him? That makes sense. Shrug. <laughs> um, she go- so um, he points her towards Hunt Stone. Hunt Stone was a guy who was kidnapped and was being held up for his fortune was being held up as the ransom slash prize for the race of thieves. His son, big, his, huge, and, large. Yes. And his, <laughs> yeah. And so Hunt Stone's son was being held captive and that's why he was going to give all of his money to roulette. Um, he also has hair that's on fire for some reason. Yeah, for the, it has no never, it has the never been mentioned, but his hair is gigantic and glowing. But that's glowing his name and now. Fire. Well, we'll get there. Because <laughs> his hair, it's glowing and it's like it's on fire, like he's a gaslight or something. He was actually the mastermind behind the race of thieves all along. He was gaslighting Catwoman. He was worried that evidence would come up that he was the ancestor of Victoria Viceroy's illegitimate child. He destroyed evidence that wouldn't have hurt his case at all, <laughs> and he ga- wound up gaslighting himself. Gaslight! Gaslight, <laughs> gaslight, gaslight. Gaslight? Gaslight, gaslight. It's almost as if the word has no meaning anymore. <laughs> gaslight, gaslight, gaslight. Because they just keep randomly saying gaslight throughout yeah. all the conversations. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know what I would like to do? I'd like to gaslight someone. How about you, Brian? Gaslighting sounds like a blast. (laughs) It sounds sounds like like a gas. gas. (laughs) Uh. 
So Alice Tesla works up some more crazy contraptions to help Catwoman get roulette, who apparently now has crazy OCD. This has been a long-standing character trait of roulette, be having obsessive compulsive disorder to the point where she has to have a very perfectly regimented day. So Catwoman sneaks around her co- compound and home alone pranks her in the <laughs> shadows of daylight to make her think her daily routine is messed up. Roulette- Vengeance. Is that is that gaslighting? Is that what it is? <laughs> sure. Is Macaulay Culkin actually Hunt Stone? Maybe. <laughs> roulette is going... Roulette is so mad that her day is getting messed up, she's going to sue everyone that is messing up her day. We might finally get some red-hot litigation action in an (laughs) Anishanti comic book. Uh, She then goes and messes up a Chinese business deal by putting low-life thugs in Roulette's gang that weren't her gang members, and they offend the Chinese businessmen. And then Catwoman (laughs) jumps through a paper wall and puts her thumb on her nose and blows a raspberry at Roulette until she gives up. (laughs) Pretty Essentially, much. <laughs> uh, it, so she's goes, oh my gosh, I give up. You've ruined my day. It's like, ha ha. Guess what I did to you. That's in the terrible, tor- <laughs> her- tor- terrible, terrible, no good, very bad day. But she, she gaslighted her. Yeah, she, she gaslighted gaslight her. her. <laughs> so Catwoman finishes off this action-packed race of thieves by putting files in her top secret safe that she forgets where it is. It's so <laughs> secret. <laughs> And she checks off who she owes and who owes favors to her after this, and also decides that Huntstone's name is Gaslight now because Gaslight, Gaslight, <laughs> Gaslight. Catwoman 33, Race of Thieves, touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> was this was this back to the form that you wanted? I guess. <laughs> well, it's been it hasn't been the same since the whole underground. It's not since the Joker's daughter left. You just haven't been as jazzed about it. it it's, and this this race of thieves seemed to pull you back in. It did. It did pull me back in. Yes, we once we got through all the mandated crossovers, it got much. It got much more stream of conscious bizarre. <laughs> Things kind of tie together, but not really. Again, well, we get we get more enjoyment out of this book than half the line, I think. Yes, yes. But uh, that's not what they're going for, so I'm not sure what that means. I want her to finish her run on this book, do an interview, and say she gaslighted us all. Oh, man. If only. <laughs> if only. Well, you're continuing on. Oh, I am, aren't I? Wonder Woman 33. Scott, would you believe that Wonder Woman is the best book in the DC Universe? I would because I think you asked me this question last time. Okay. Verbatim. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're at the end of this big, gigantic, epic story. It's tying up in another issue or two. Well, actually, we'll, we'll check in first with the big, big vil- villain that they're fighting. It's the Firstborn. He has captured Wonder Woman. He has digivolved into his final boss form. Of this repla- is the Firstborn Son of Zeus. Yes, Firstborn, illegitimate Son of Zeus. He has replaced all of his muscle and viscera that he was composed out of last time we saw him with a charred black husk, a thorn bone horn. A crown of thorns. Yes, and a cape of veins. A cape of veins. That's what you need. eh? Mm -hmm. (laughs) He tries to get Wonder Woman to marry him, but she's all, you ick, no gross. You're technically (laughs) my brother. That's really weird. And cape of veins, man. Cape of veins. (laughs) So he he decides to destroy everything that she loves. Uh, Amazon Island, which now has a combined army of the Amazons, the sons of the Amazons, uh, various Greek gods, and Orion of New Genesis, they prepare for an attack from the Firstborn's forces, and they are trying to protect Wonder Woman's friend Zola and her baby Zeke, Who is is absolutely normal. He's a completely normal baby. Yes. (laughs) He's not the son of Zeus. He is not Zeus hiding in baby form. He's a perfectly normal baby. Perfectly normal baby. (laughs) Who's a name that starts with Z and only has four letters. As a defense, Alika, the head guard of the Amazonian army, turns the entire islands into a killing maze. Yes. I love it. Yes. Uh, A labyrinth of death mm, awaits you. As the battle rages on, uh, Firstborn sends his head acolytes, Cassandra the Voiceless, who can still talk, but you know, and uh, the S&M Minotaur (laughs) into the fight, and they teleport through the pools of blood of all the fallen warriors on Amazon But we get another scene where the S&M Minotaur looks at Wonder Woman first. Yes. Like he's waiting for her permission, it seems. Yes. To do what he says. 
again, it's we've had, just, we've had a lot. Of, we've, the the Minotaur has had many run-ins with Wonder Woman, and he seems to have some respect. And she also saved him at one point, didn't she? Yes, and it's yeah. just a well, she didn't kill him. Yeah, when she was training with War, that was her last lesson. Where War said, "You have to kill him now," and she was like, "No, I'm not going to kill this guy. He's cool. Look at him. He looks like an S and M Minotaur. I mean, that's awesome." <laughs> Wonder Woman spor- uh, spurns the Firstborn's advances for like the millionth time, so he cuts her in the stomach with his Baraka blade that he's got, leaves her to die, and heads off to the fight himself. Did you I just make a uh, Mortal Kombat reference? Yes, I did. Okay. He's got Baraka blades He does have Baraka blades. I was just making sure we were talking about the right Baraka here. Yes. There's more Barakas? Yeah, there's All tons right. of Barakas, man. <laughs> If you had well, there, are, there are the Westchester Baracas. Yeah, yeah see? The Westchester Baracas. It's, it's unfortunate they didn't have Maraca blades. That would be even cooler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, get a, we get a big, gigantic fight. <laughs> <laughs> the first ball is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Orion gets gored by the S&M Minotaur. No! Cassandra kills Alika as she tries to protect Zola. No! no! Wonder Woman goes pale and bleeds out. No! All is lost. And then Zeke... The Just to- goo goo the totally Sucks on his passy. The totally normal baby. Eats some yogurt. His eyes don't start glowing. <laughs> and then Wonder Woman's mother, Hera, who has been turned into a statue... No, 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 no. Hippolyta. Hippolyta. Yes. Right. Sorry, you're right. She's in the issue, too. Uh, Hippolyta, who has been turned into a statue, comes back to life as a living statue to lead the Amazons once more. And she certainly doesn't have glowing eyes like the baby. The no. The baby isn't passed out. No. He's not controlling it. or No. Because no. <laughs> babies don't do that. <laughs> babies don't do that. They're perfectly normal. Uh, we did get the sad, sad beginning of the return to the status quo for Hera, though. Yeah, yeah, there was a brief scene where Hera, who's been, she got her powers taken away, and then she sort of became this hilarious, like, boozy mom best friend. Yes. And she like, became like the, the desperate housewife that lived down the street from the other demigods and was just like, hey, let me come see the baby. Woo! Let's have some wine. And she, and she like became very maternal because she never really got to take care of any of her kids since her husband Zeus was off busy having illegitimate children. Yes, just everywhere. While disguising himself as, you know, crows and whatnot, getting ladies pregnant. So, so she like was take, you know, really took a really grandmotherly role with baby Zeke and it was kind of adorable. And then she got her powers back last issue from a, and use them to People embarrass got... Orion this yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. So nice then, end, though. Strong end. Very strong very end. Very strong end. Yeah, so it, I'm... It, it's really ramped up to, like, the big epic war ending type thing. Yeah, so it's... I'm looking forward to... I'm, I'm not looking forward to it ending, but I'm I'm glad we're going to get a nice, full, complete story by this creative team. I am I am looking forward to the ending. I yeah. want to see if well, they can stick it. Goes, yeah, I want to see if they can stick it because that's going to be the the decision of their legacy on whether this is the ultimate run or if it's just a good run. Yeah, yeah. So I'm so, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, what's, Aqu- what's Aquaman doing? Yeah, because we're sticking with royalty. You had your queen of the Amazons, mm-hmm. and I have the king of the seas. With Aquaman, who has been fighting a, a guy that we kind of laughed at at first. It was basically this deep sea welder got eaten by a bunch of sharks and Aquaman saved him and took him to an undersea base, a research lab. And the people there, one of the guys was a mad scientist and said, I can fix him and just basically started duct taping all the sea life onto him <laughs> to try to get him back. He's like, put some electric eels here and tape a shark there and staple on some starfish. <laughs> And he has come out as a guy by the name of Chimera, and he is anything but not creepy as hell. He has lampreys for arms, essentially, and uh, suction cups all along the arms, and he rips flesh off with his suction cups. They're so strong, and lampreys off people's faces, and yeah, he's not cool. I gotta but check that out. Yeah, he's actually. Oh, a, there he is. Yeah, he's a great design, but. Uh, not, well, that's, that's not even the full. That's not even full Chimera no. in that one. Yeah, it's it's a. He's basically what is what is Aquaman's superpower, Scott? Uh, water. Okay, but <laughs> what 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 is what is he He's, known for doing? What can he do? He throw one of those harpoon things. No, he talks to fish. Talks to fish. Okay, yeah, that's his thing. He talks to yeah, fish. That's what everyone makes fun of him for. Yeah. Well, this guy's better at talking to fish than he is. He used to be a character by the name of Creature King. Basically, all the animals listened to him more than they listened to Aquaman. 
So it's basically him sicking all the animals on Aquaman, and they're fighting, fighting, fighting. And uh, he overpowers Aquaman, and Chimera tries to get into his head and basically do the same thing to Aquaman, control him. And there's kind of a feedback loop that happens, and it, they both get knocked away, and Chimera has to retreat. Uh, Arthur, Aquaman, gets knocked unconscious, and he is found by the people of, like, the advanced vanguard of Atlantis. They find him out there, and they wake him up, and he's like, oh, man. That was not the creature king I was expecting to find. I, I thought it was going to be a goofy guy with some eels taped to him. Why didn't anyone warn me about this thing? <laughs> and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, we've been pretty busy. You know, your wife uh, stopped a assassination attempt and has arrested half of the dissenting people of your kingdom. Basically, the the middle states, the swim-over states of Atlantis were all rebelling. <laughs> at the, this guy's not our king. <laughs> I didn't vote for him, and... Blah, blah, mm. blah. So, yeah, they weren't going anywhere with that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't blame me. I voted for Orm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then uh, he goes, oh, geez, she's fighting all that going on there. I better head back and make sure because I'm the best king ever. And he swims on back, meets up with Mara again. He's like, oh, my beloved, I heard you've been kicking ass and taking names. Yeah, we've arrested basically all the dissenters here. And uh, that's when... What's the best way to put it? There's a bunch of earthquakes that start hitting Atlantis. And they're like, whoa, when did earthquakes start hitting? I don't know why everyone's like staggering around because they're in the water. So Someone's shaking the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. The cameraman's actually standing on the ground. And he's like, oh, geez, this is rough. <laughs> uh, but all the people, all these dissenters are blaming Aquaman for these earthquakes. Thanks, oh, Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he's like, yeah, you guys are pretty lame. I'm not causing earthquakes. I'm just, you know, your king. And Volko is off in one of the cells, and he's like, oh, little does he know, because I haven't told him the full truth still. (laughs) (laughs) But he actually is the cause for all of these earthquakes. (laughs) This Volko guy has been, uh, every single time there's like a... Oh man, there's something I don't know about my past. Volko's just like in the back going, Oh yeah, I probably should have told him about that, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, but this ends when, uh, they're gonna go off and find Dr. Shin to find out who made this, uh, this Chimera guy, but we're gonna follow Chimera because he got into Aquaman's head and he has a picture of Amnesty Bay, the, the town in Maine where Aquaman actually lives. He's like, well that must be where Aquaman lives. The whole thing is that uh, this Chimera, It has two brains in its head. One of them is from the Kraken, a big monster that was under the ocean that Aquaman killed. Half of it's his brain, and the other half is Coombs, this diver, this this welder guy that Aquaman actually tried to save from these sharks. So it has this whole conflicting thing in its head where Aquaman is the guy that saved him, but the guy that killed him, and he's just obsessed with Aquaman right now trying to figure out what the hell this guy did to him. So he's trying to find him. He goes up to Amnesty Bay, and we find out one of his other fish powers that were stapled onto the back is he has, like, a mimic octopus, and he can look like a normal human being and camouflage himself so that no one sees him whatsoever, and he that's what he does. Kills one of the cops there, struts off into town looking for Aquaman, and that's when he runs across uh, Erica and Jenny. Have you been reading this at all, Brian? Uh, it's one of those things I keep saying I'm going to read, and I okay. think I'll catch the high up school on your reunion eventually. episode. Okay, the, like there was there was an issue where Aquaman went to his high school reunion that was nice. absolutely awesome. <laughs> uh, so it's it's people that he went to high school with, and the the young girl that Mara saved that was being sexually harassed in the grocery store. Yeah, I remember her. Yeah, it's it's those two. They're okay. in the city, and. Basically, Chimera comes up to them, and they seem very familiar with Aquaman, and he turns back into his scary monster form, and he's like, where's Aquaman? Where is he? And he senses where Aquaman is before they can answer, so he just leaves him behind and jumps off, because Aquaman went to the U.S. naval ship where Dr. Shin has been taken after Triton Base was destroyed by Chimera, and he comes in and goes, hey, how you doing, Dr. Shin? Just want to make sure you're okay. What's up with this Chimera guy? What happened? He's like, oh, man, that other professor guy that was down there with me just started stapling shit all over him, and this is what we got. So, sorry, I don't know why. I told him not to. I (laughs) swear to God, I said, you should put down that staple gun, man. You are doing some crazy stuff right now. But he didn't listen to me. And uh, Chimera jumps onto the ship, sneaks his way in, 
and basically murders half the people on the ship and goes, Aquaman, there you are. Aquaman, my savior. Aquaman, my destroyer. We meet yet again. And that's where we leave off this issue. It's compelling for Aquaman. Aquaman has had the biggest turnaround as far as the new 52 since the relaunch, where it's kind of like very interesting. And even after Jeff Johns left, it's the stuff Parker's doing has a completely different tone to it. Completely mm-hmm. different tone. It's not the, the badass above all. He's very fallible. Yes. Very, very fallible. Mm. But it's not to the point where he's worthless. So yeah, it's, it's making him up. Adding some flaws that maybe he should have had it beforehand. So, yes, it, and it, it comes across pretty good. Yeah, and uh, again, we've laughed and laughed and laughed at, at this Chimera guy, but he is not a, someone you mess around yeah. with. He's pretty gnarly looking. Yeah, I mean, taking it, a peek at it, it yeah. is an insane desi- design that they put together for this guy. Wow. Yeah, especially with our long-standing fear of lampreys that we have said on this show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's that's Aquaman like thirty-three. That. <laughs> All right, so I'm going into space. I've got Red Lanterns 33. Scott, do you know? Speaking what... of Sons of Anarchy, <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, Scott, do you know what the Red Lanterns are? No. All right, so they've got the Green Lanterns. They're like space cops. They've got the green light that comes out of their rings, and their like whole thing is like we've got willpower, and you need willpower yeah. to make our rings work. Yeah. Well, they decided to Roy G. Biv the whole Green Lantern concept, and so now there's. A different kind of lantern for each light. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of aware of that part. I just don't quite know what the red one. Yeah, is. red ones are rage, and okay. they and they Makes spent sense. a good twenty issues or so just being rage monsters. Glar, glar, glar. Sp- We're spitting, angry, spitting up blood all over everything. And then uh, they decided to change creative teams. They brought in Charles Soule, who we never talk about. Never. But he's like he's a, he's an okay, he's an okay writer. <laughs> um, and he decided, okay, we're going to ha- put... We've unabashedly fanboyed over his work. It's terrible. I gather that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know his tones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so they took Guy Gardner, who's sort of the notoriously uh, cranky Green Lantern, and they said, okay, we're going to make him a Red Lantern. So he sort of went in, uh, kicked out the gigantic blood spew- blar, spewing blar, monster blar, blar. Uh, Atrocitus. <laughs> he kicked him out along with his uh, hate kitty, and then he took ch- charge of the rest of the Red Lanterns. And then suddenly, with this good guy taking control of the team, uh, all of these rage monsters have become hilarious, adorable buddy cops with everyone else. And we've sort of been dealing with these ridiculous rage monsters becoming likable characters while Atrocitus goes off in schemes and builds like another like evil blood spewing blar, rage blar, monster blar, team. Blar, blar. <laughs> so, um, the last thing that they finally realize that Atrocitus is alive, he's been kind of doing stuff off in the background while they've been having their own adventures. They finally figure out he's alive. He's basically he went and he knocked over their clubhouse. Yes. He ruined their clubhouse. There's a gigantic blood pool on the Red Lanterns. Uh, on Fourth of July, he destroyed their pool. Yes, it was very, very he tainted mean. Their blood pool. They have no more blood <laughs> magic to recharge their blood rings. Um, so they're kind of, and uh, he also brainwashed one of their members, Rancor. Turned him feral. Turned him feral. And so they're kind of trying to deal with all this stuff and figuring out how to uh, attack Atrocitus one more time. Uh, so to deal with that, Guy Gardner does what he does best, and he goes out drinking with his drinking buddy. <laughs> Calls up John Stewart, not the host of The Daily Show, the uh, Green Lantern that you will see in like the Justice League cartoon, that, gr- that version of Green Lantern. So he meets up with them at the bar, and they're old friends, so they kind of talk about what's been going on in their respective lives. And there's lives. a shout-out. A shout-out to my favorite Green Lantern, Swixel, the... Uh, Drinking swizzle stick Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> Who is quite literally an alien race that has evolved to look like drink, drink umbrellas. umbrellas. <laughs> All right. And they just lurk in bars, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Scalox and Zilius Zox. Zilius Zox is a gigantic, um, he's like a boulder. He's like a living boulder with a face. Everyone keeps calling him a, a testicle with a face, essentially. Well, yes, but he's uh, he's my favorite character. He just loves, he admires things that are round. And, you know. And his arch nemesis is Ba'ox, the, who is, who is a, the who is square. The, the, the cubicle <laughs> Green Lantern. And, uh. Because he ain't got no time for squares. He ain't got no time for squares. <laughs> and a Scalox, who's like this, uh. He's like got like a horse bone face. They are on monitor duty, and they miss Supergirl was a Red Lantern for a while, but she had to leave. And uh, they're kind of like 
Que- and Scalox has been kind of over the past few issues starting questioning, uh, starting to question how Guy Gardner is running things. But Zilius Zox, who is the best character in the world, still trusts Guy Gardner. Yeah, and that's the important because thing. they got beds now. He got a spaceship. Mm-hmm. Look at how his, everything. They used to sleep in a blood pool next to a bunch of rocks for pillows. I mean, yeah. they're moving on up in the world. Exactly. <laughs> they had statues built for t- <laughs> overthrowing that space Hitler. Yes. <laughs> so, um. We check outside Rancor. He's still feral, and Bleez, who is this lady with like bone wings, who has sort of slowly been admitting she has a crush on Rancor, and she doesn't like the fact that her pseudo boyfriend has gone feral. Just as she is starting to realize that she liked him, so she says, "Hey, um, maybe if you drink some of my uh magic rage blood." You will go back to normal. So she cuts herself and starts bleeding out and says, here, drink my blood off of my arm. And everyone's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe we should have put Blee's in charge of watching Rancor here. Something horribly wrong is going on. And there's a new member called the judge who's just standing there judging. Impartially. As, as, as she does. Yep. You know. Um, Scalox abandons them because a little alert goes off on his home planet. So uh, he goes there and it turns out that Atrocitus is now dressed like a cult leader um, or a member of the polyphonic spree. I don't know. One of the two. Uh, and he's Deacon got... Deacon Atrocifier. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he's got a new blood pool that he built. That is he going to move painted. under Arkham Asylum? Maybe. Uh, Church is popping up all over the place yeah, down there. I know. <laughs> and he's got a bunch of new blood rage monster red lanterns. And then Scalox joins them because Atrocitus killed his tormentors on his home planet. Scalox, the cause of no. his rage. Yep. That was the whole thing. Atrocitus, right before he got ousted, said, you know what? I've been greedy and using you guys against my rage. You all have rage for your own reasons, and I needed to actually start helping you guys out by putting together missions where we go against the people that wronged you, that made you Red Lanterns. So, yeah, so he's actually following through on his promises. Yeah, and- so Scalox joins up with the bad guys. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, Guy and John, they get involved in a bar fight because that's what Guy Gardner does. He gets in bar fights. And Guy figures that, well, fighting atrocities shouldn't be that hard. So you got you Green Lanterns, you can keep doing your own thing. I know you're not going to help us anyway because you don't like us. And then uh, we cut back to Atrocitus using his blood magic to create make a crap ton of new red rings with his blood pool. Yep. Just so. literally hundreds of rings flying out of his blood pool, off to go create Come hundreds on, of new find rage Super blood Girl. monsters. Find Supergirl. Oh, <laughs> uh, if only. <laughs> but we get a new capital of the Red Lanterns now. Yes. What's the name of that planet? Do you I remember? I not tell you. Okay, fair enough. But we got a new one now, and they have a nice little rage citadel right in the middle of their blood pool. Mm-hmm. Much better than just a giant battery. Yes. So, I still love the book. Still, yeah. Still having fun with it. It's all about it's all about character. Yeah, it, that's it all it is. It just sounds like I'm saying words to, if, to someone new, but it's so much fun interacting, hanging, watching the characters all interact with each other. That's what makes it fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the penultimate issue of Trinity of Sin, colon, Pandora, number 13, will wrap up our show for this week. Uh, we're kind of wrapping things up. She just got shot. Uh, you know Pandora, mm-hmm. the Greek myth. It's exactly what that is. She she opened the box, released the seven deadly sins, and has been cursed to live forever. And she has been trying to get vengeance and capture the seven deadly sins. Was able to actually do so. Yay, she killed the seven deadly sins, the actual embodiments of them at least. And has been going around. She had a helper over the centuries, a guy by the name of Marcus, at least in the present day, his name was Marcus, who was kind of the weaponsmith for Pandora, who just got killed by a radioactive Cro-Magnon caveman that has been granted immortality as well. Sure. All right. Yeah, he killed her. (laughs) He killed the the weaponsmith guy that she loved. And uh, at this point, they bring her back to consciousness giganta is there because remember she gave her soul birds and mm-hmm. giganta likes her now and of course agent kincaid the shade agent and they get pandora back on her who's feet. a were crow a were raven, were raven. Okay. that's right and uh they get her back on her feet and she's like well i have to do this whole sorcery thing so that i can have my boyfriend reincarnated again so can you guys give me a hand sure we'll give you a hand now, while this is being done, they basically build a giant pyre and throw him on it. And she goes, woogie, woogie, woogie. And his soul travels off. But while all that's happening, there's all these fun flashbacks of throughout the ages of her and this guy as he's been reincarnated over the centuries. 
So it starts off in like ancient Greece where he's making her a shield and then it jumps to like Thailand in the uh, 600 area and he's a monk there that makes her a weapon and then in uh, Pirates on the High Seas during the Age of Sail, he's like, hey, I made you these blunderbusses. Isn't that awesome? And they're like, woo! <laughs> wow, what are all the over. chances? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's actually very fun. That was more interesting to me than the present day stuff that's been going on. If we would have just dealt with her over the ages, I would have had a lot of fun with this book. It's being canceled next issue. So ah. while they bring her back or this guy back, the little soul flies off and they go, OK, well, he'll be reincarnated soon. That's pretty cool. Someone else notices this little ritual going off and they turn around and they report back to this lady who's sitting in a chair and they're like, hey, queen, um, someone's doing some soul magic over there. I thought I'd let you know. She's like, soul magic. <sighs> Man, I had all these plans for the city, but if people are moving in here that can do soul magic, that's going to mess everyone. Uh, okay, whatever. Get all the troops together. We're going to march out there because, by God, if I am going to proclaim this, the new capital of the vampire kingdom, well, then I got to get rid of these soul magician people. So it's no soul birds allowed in vampire town. What about the soul taker? Uh, soul taker, maybe, but okay. not soul birds. Yeah. Uh, they... It turns out to be either Lilith or uh, Mary, Queen of Blood. I don't know which, who it's supposed to be by the art alone. Mm. Because it's just a a lady sitting in the chair, and she's surrounded by vampires, and she's like, this is it. We kind of failed miserably last time we tried this, but we're going to claim Baltimore as the capital of the vampire kingdom. (laughs) It already is. (laughs) It'll be like The Wire, but spooky. (laughs) As I said, I, I really like the flashback stuff. That was fun. There was a lot of really cool stuff. It, honestly, if we just had an Age of Sail Pandora, I'd read that. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Give me a demon ice could show up there. Yeah. That'd exactly. be awesome, man. That'd be a blast. <laughs> Sounds like Cloud Atlas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'd be very, very similar. Yeah. Except they were just fighting all the, the demons of sin on the high seas. It'd probably Great. be more exciting than the movie Cloud yeah. Atlas. Yeah. yeah. Pirates of Dark Water. Yeah. That's what it'd been like. Anyone remember that one? Nope. I remember it existing. There was a monkey bird. I remember the I remember the monkey bird. <laughs> the scrappy do of Pirates of Dark Water. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That's all the books for this half or this show. As we even. limp across the finish line. <laughs> yes, I know. We're struggling. As I said, uh it was a bit of an odd episode, so my apologies. I got it right. I called it an episode. Yes, you didn't call it an issue. Hooray. <laughs> But as a reminder, you guys go out there and buy these books. They're, as you see with Pandora, it has good ideas. It has potential. Pandora got stuck being all about crossovers for his first eight issues. Yes, which is fine. And as I said, even then, I don't want to be a hypocrite. It was a bold way to do it because we thought it was going to be her little side adventures of chasing the seven deadly sins. And then they kind of threw it dead center into the middle of Forever Evil. And I was like, man, that's really bold and brash. And I hope it pays off didn't quite pay off for him it seems yeah. so i don't know gi zombie i'm sorry star spangled war stories gi zombie though give it a chance if yeah, you're at seriously. least interested just give it a shot i'm not saying buy the entire run it's one issue if it, if you were intrigued whatsoever by it give it a shot because i think you may be pleasantly surprised by it yeah i i certainly was and if you just want goddamn comic book fun Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. As I'm slamming the desk with each word emphatically, Comics. Batman and Robin. <laughs> that's that's your go-to right there. Mm-hmm. So, Brian, what are you doing for your book of this week? Oh, it's it's got to be Wonder Woman. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I, I I could. Throw but you had Wonder Woman it. and Red Lanterns in the same week. Yeah, but it's like Sophie's choice for you. I know. <laughs> Uh, but yes, make sure you go out there and buy them because if you don't buy them, they won't make them and none of us will have anything to do. No one wins in that situation. Uh, as I'm rushing through the end here, next week's books, we get a reprieve. Okay. Thankfully, we get a reprieve because it's fifth week, <laughs> which means it's question catch up time next week for All us. Right. We're going to have to burn through some of our backlog, but the books we have are Justice League number 32. Uh, the new 52 futures end number 13. No rest for the, uh, no rest for the weeklies. No west for the no weeklies. No west for the weeklies either. No west for the weeklies. Uh, Aquaman annual number two as, uh, Wonder Woman and Aquaman go try to track down all those Greek demons that Aquaman, whoops, let out. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Batman Eternal number 17, Detective Comics Annual number 3, Ugh, 3, Harley Quinn number 8, Sinestro number 4, Red Lantern's Annual number 1. I, I never thought we would we see an annual Red for Lantern's them. Red Lantern's Annual, yeah. Yeah, that's just weird. And that's it. That's what the, all the books we're getting next week. Weird. weird. Cannot believe Red Lanterns has come that far. Yeah. Uh, but if you guys want to contact us, we do have a backlog of questions. But if you have something, San Diego Comic Con's going on this week right now. Uh, what well, it's over by the time you're listening to this, but mm-hmm. it's happening as we're speaking. So who knows? Maybe something crazy came out of that. I know Grant Morrison released a map of the multiverse. Really? He actually mapped it all out as far as where they are intersecting and all the different planes of the 52 worlds oh, and have to dive into how that. that relates to the new gods and where the rock of eternity splinters through all the different multiversal yeah it's very uh god bless you grant morrison yeah, You're still yeah. doing your crazy stuff high concept man high concept mm-hmm. so i mean there's some crazy stuff feel free to throw in some questions you guys know how to do it use the internet we are at dcr podcast everywhere so I'm not going to explain how the internet works as i always say <laughs> uh that being said guys do you have anything else before we close out at three o'clock in the morning no 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 no. (laughs) scott hollywood scott yeah thank you so much for joining us for having me uh i'll have to get more coffeeed up next time best comic-con coverage i think that Mm -hmm. any show has had oh yes easily by far we're gonna have to keep you involved with all the like you said you know people know how the internet works what do they need me for (laughs) (laughs) they're gonna find out about scott Uh, So, guys, from all of us here, enjoy your books, enjoy your week, enjoy your lives, and we will talk to you next week. Bye.